Welcome into the Cam and Strick podcast, episode number 88. 88. Oh, I can't Yo. think of anybody. Mm. Mm. Nobody on Chicago. No former player on, on Philly I can't think of. Uh, Chicago. Can, oh, yeah. What? What? Yeah, I know. What? I know who Patty Kane is. What? Who? 88. Damn, we done 88. We're almost at Patty Kane or Hundo, Lindros. Baby. Who do you like more? At the time, at the beginning, probably Lindros. If I could take Lindros and put him in the Patty Kane era, I'd like Lindros more. But Patty Kane in the Patty Kane era, I like Patty Kane more. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Kane became more and more likable as his career continued. Actually, to move I just on. wait, wait. I just said I, no, I, I don't know I don't what, know you what said. I just fucking said. You said Jesus. What? Christ. You said you like Kane in the Lindros era. No, in the Lindros no, era. No, era? yeah, no, and no. Kane in the Kane era. No, I said I like Lindros in the Kane era, and then I said I like Kane in the Kane era. I'm a fucking idiot, mm -hmm. is what I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so Jesus. so start that over. Not starting shit. Who do you like working. more? Oh, uh, Lindros. You do? Yeah, man. Big motherfucker. Mm. Play center. See, I love Patty Kane, man. I know people hate him here in St. Louis and whatever. They don't hate. I mean, it's hard I to like hate the too. guy. Three times Stanley Cup champ. He's cool, man. He just plays different. You he's know, got swag. And Lindros did a little bit. You know, he's got swag in like a league that has very limited swag. I think Patrick Kane has more swag than Lindros did. Lindros was kind of like stuck no up. No doubt. No doubt. I know. I embarrassed myself in front of him, too, which... What with the interview? Now, now he's really looking. Oh, down because upon you me. thought you played against him, yeah, and you weren't even on the team. So or like, he Patty, wasn't on the I'm team. I'm pretty cool, with Patty Kane, right now. With like Lindros looks down upon me, like I'm a fucking peasant, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Hi. That was one of your. We should rank your top five, like fuck ups, mistakes. Oh god, <laughs> that was bad. That's okay. fucking embarrassing. That's okay. That was at the beginning too, when we're doing COVID shit. So we're both, we weren't like it was we're early kind of on in COVID. Yeah, yeah, and then I fucked that up against a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. We're lucky he didn't set us back like fucking years. No. Um, dude, so much went on over the weekend. Like, we finished our uh, recording the other day, and then right after we're done, and we talked a lot about this Mitchell Miller thing, which we don't need to dive back into. Yeah, but then University of North Dakota, they dropped his ass, too. Yeah. No, I know. I know. It's like I, all these... I think they want to... Should we be... He, they kind of want that, us to be his mentor? Uh, well, that I mean, what, I we're don't gonna know. Talk about that? Um, possibly. I mean... The, like, I'll help anybody, if, yeah. but he needs to want to be would helped. You, would you mentor... Fucking right. A oh, kid like it, that? Look, I'm... Yeah, dude, I'll mentor anybody. But if the kid wants to work on it, mm -hmm. and I sit his fucking ass down, I go, dude, you need to look in the public and admit you fucked up and t show people, prove to people that you fucking well, you know what are a different person. To? You see, you've got millions of people on the other side. You're here, they're there. No one believes you, no one Nobody likes believes, you. Nobody believes, they hate what you. What can you do? To all of a sudden reverse that and get people you have to, do to believe you that you could be exactly. a good person and, they, and that you deserve an opportunity to play in the and NHL. So if I'm going to mentor your fucking ass and you're like, what, what are we doing? Uh, I'm like, fuck you. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. I'm like, fuck your stupid ass. I'm done with you. We're like, hey, Cam, how you doing? Hey, what do you mean? What do you, when we do this? Yeah, I'm like, okay, we'll sit here. We'll do a video. I'll do it with you, man. You're good. Da, da, da. And we fucking do it. I'm like, and he's like, anything else you want to do? Like, if he, did, if he was that kid and he's like, God, Cam, I feel so. I'm like, fucking A. I'm going to fucking go to bat for you. And I'm going to take shit. Mm -hmm. For going to bat, but if you come in like what, what do you do? Yeah, like fuck your stupid ass. I'm you think done. North Dakota should have dropped him? I don't know yet, dude, because I don't know the kid, man. Like, like I want to be on the side of giving people chances, but I need to see what mm -hmm. this kid's all about. Yeah. I want him to sit right. His the, biggest this issue. Me, I want this motherfucker right next to me, mm -hmm. and I want to look into it in his fucking soul and have him look at me. I know I fucked up a million yeah, times. Yeah. I fucking changed, man. Like, are you look. I, I need to look at you, homie. Well, his biggest issue is that there's been a strong case that he just really hasn't shown much remorse. Well, then there whether you that's go. true or not, like, I, I mean, know. I don't pretend to know exactly what he's thinking or what he's feeling. I need him next. But to he me. hasn't necessarily done the appropriate steps we'll move on from this but i will say his representation the people that represent his ass have done an absolute terrible, terrible job horrible okay by Way not getting out in front of this and by not having any necessary steps prepared to prevent him from being in this situation to where all of a sudden he can be drafted and then all of a sudden you can say to a team and say to the hockey community this is what this kid's been doing to rehabilitate himself He's been in schools talking to kids, yeah, yeah. you know, he's been, um, you know, volunteering with different programs and whatever. He, he walked naked like old girl on Game of Thrones and everybody said, fucking shame, shame, shame. We've all been through that. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do it. You probably won't. Your body won't be as good as fucking yeah. old girl. Though. My she guess is he, he, he finds his way back to the USHL. 
We'll see if he lands back into college. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I know. We'll see. But again, I'll help anybody. Any, I don't give a fuck. Guys yeah. can chirp me all you want. I'll help anybody. But if you sit next to me and you're not with it, get the fuck away from me now. Don't waste my motherfucking time. Did you see the reaction from the entire hockey world when when the report came out that the OHL wasn't going to allow oh, hitting? Like, no hitting. And everyone's like, oh, my God. Now, the latest on this is that there may be hitting allowed, oh, right? Okay. Okay. There's like a minister of sport. Did you know that? Like Canada has the best titles for like their public officials. I want to be like the minister of sport. Yeah, that'd be okay? kind of cool. All right. And I, I, she was the one that came out, I guess, and said yeah, no yeah. hitting and whatever. Then you had like some other like, you know, uh, leaders in the community. Well, did Dave said, Branch said, come out? Well, he's obviously, you know, runs a CHL. So Explore, they're going to yeah. work with the government to determine how they're going to do this. But, I mean, the reaction from people, you know, was priceless because most people were like, I mean, are you crazy? Like, how, why don't you just like... Just cancel it. Like, if you're not going to play the game the way it should be played, then don't play it at all. It's really that simple. It's so ridiculous. And the, and the NHL did a couple different things to adjust and what, what they needed to do, but you're going to take hitting out, but they get to battle in the corners together and, like, still, like, rub. You know, they with, take face-offs. They sit next to each other they, on the they, bench. They share bottles. They're like, in the dressing room the together. Fuck? They don't share bottles. No. Oh, well, what the fuck? Look, when I get off, <laughs> Andy. When you get off done with a two minute shift and you get on the fucking bench and you're like, which one's my water? Mm-hmm. No, you're not. You're like, Bleh, help me. No, but Cam, you are fuck. now, dude. No, I'm dude, telling you. I'm like, okay, fine. Go okay. talk to these players Thank that just came you. back okay, from the bubble. Thank- They'll I'm, tell you. Listen to me. They're not using I, someone else's bottle. Li- listen to me. Fine. Okay, fine. We'll give you that. But you're not going to battle in the corner where they're like pressing you against the glass. You can't do that. Then what are you going to do? They're just like, you can't go near them. Then what the fuck are you doing? But see, they're not saying that, but they're saying. Well, what you, are you saying well, then? They, no, but they're saying you can battle, but you can't. It's just no, like, but then what's the difference? Then tell me now, again, scientifically, tell me what the difference is. If you can't hit each other, they, but you can still hold each other up in the corners and battle one on one battles in the corner. What the fuck is the difference? Explain how this makes sense, please. And, and why can't you just give your like proper opinion? Everyone's Thanks. like, "Well, I'm not uh, a health expert. Oh, I don't Can we know. call a couple guys? I'm not a scientist. No, but you're but... the biggest. No, but you have the biggest voice in hockey. And you're like, "Well, you just stop it. You're retired. Just be like, damn it, this is stupid. This is stupid. What do you care if somebody? Re- you're sitting on your lake with millions. Of- Who cares? You know, this is ridiculous. And if it's not, if it, if you guys think it's not, then tell us because again, we're both open minded. But you tell me, tell me, this is why scientifically, this, that, and the other combination, blah, 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 A through Z, but do, 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 you can't hit. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, cool. Hey, but you listen, haven't done that. We don't have to be so, so nice it, when we disagree I don't sometimes, give a shit okay? <laughs> You're allowed to say, you know what, this is the dumbest thing I've ever I heard mean, in my come life. On. This is so stupid. What the Cancel fuck? Cancel the season. What do you mean we're not going to hit? This is so I, dumb. Here's what I want them to do put the puck in the middle. And then everybody, 10 players, they all have their, their designated area where there's a line drawn. And you just stare at the puck the whole time and don't even do anything. I say That's have, what I want. I just say you have a 5 on 0. Oh. Just have a shootout. Just a shootout then with no next, goalie. Then the next team has a shootout. With no goalie. And then the next yeah. team has a shootout. And then so we'll goes see who forever. has the most goals. And then, and then we'll make more money because people will be drinking beer. So, no, we can't have that. Never mind. What the fuck are well, we I'm doing? Well, I'm watching NFL football and the, and the football players... They're Andy, playing a football game. 60,000 people in Texas. <laughs> Are there that many? Ah, there's a lot. 60,000? Oh, well, there's there's gatherings everywhere. Like It's like one part of, of the United States. Is yeah, this, but I don't know also, how smart that is all the time either. No, I, I mean, get that too. No, no, no. Whatever. But Andy, I'm just saying, you know, like they're, but, they're playing football. We didn't say They're playing college my, football, okay, and, and then Andy, we're not going to hit in hockey. Andy, what? I know. But do, do, we, do I agree with gatherings like that? No. But if you're going to play hockey and you're going to do all this stuff in hockey where you're just together all the time, all over each other, but you can't hit, tell me why scientifically you can't hit. I get why you can't have gatherings. I get that shit. But if you're going to play hockey, why can't you fucking hit? I think what's scaring them is what's going on right now in the Quebec League. I think like eight of the eight teams can't even – or eight of the eight – or eight – there's like eight teams or something like that. Eight of the eight teams, something like that, that yeah, can't even – me. They what? can't even Jesus. use their facility. Oh, really? That have, like, outbreaks. Then don't do anything. COVID I outbreaks. I, I don't know. But you have the Western League that's waiting. You have the OHL that's waiting. I think they announced they're going to start somewhere around, like, February 4th, something like that. Yeah. So why is the Quebec League trying to get out in front, and then all of a sudden you're having all these issues? I mean, listen, youth hockey's figuring it out. They're playing games. I know some states have, like, different rules and regulations and whatever than others, so maybe not, not everybody's playing. But they're playing here. 
You just got to be smart. You got to be intelligent about it. But trying to like reinvent the game and think that that's going to yeah. make a difference, like that's what it comes down to. Okay, have no hitting. You really think that's going to truly make that big of a difference? While you're, you have they're five. skating next to each other. They're breathing yeah. on each other. Then they go back to the bench. Can I give you a, can I give you an example of a, a strategy in a D zone? You got one D, D in front. You got a D going in the corner with the puck. Oh, this is a new Listen system. You go, no, that's not fucking new, homie. <laughs> you haven't played in 80 years. I'll tell you what, how it goes down. You got a D in the corner. You got a forward in the corner. Then the other guy, forward, go, the centerman goes in there and takes care of Then a D. So you already have five guys in a motherfucking corner basically making out with each other. They're not hitting each other, but they're so close to each other, gathering the puck, trying to get the puck. What the fuck is the difference if you have that going on? Although there's no big time. Did you box. just try to like break down like a defensive zone coverage. Yeah, like why what, don't you do that? What for are you me, trying coach? to do there? I'm so, no, no. I don't know what. What did you just say? Dumb fuck. You got a player where? In the corner. Hey, Go ahead. Put your fucking rabbit ears on now, or turn your hearing aid up, <laughs> dick. I said your normal strategy in the D zone uh-huh. is you have like four or five guys in one corner okay. at a time yes. when you're battling through the puck, yeah. and that's not that's still allowed because there's no hitting involved. But what the fuck is the difference between that with five guys with a makeout session or a guy hit somebody in the corner? Like, is there more fluid comes out when you hit somebody or when you have five guys in there? So if you're allowing allowing that, then why aren't you allowing hitting? That's all my point. Don't look at me like I'm a fucking cunt anymore, please. Thank you. Although I am sometimes, but not in that sense. God damn. You're looking at me like, no, that's a basic strategy. You should write that down and give it to your AAA fucking kids. Hmm. What do you call that? You dick. What do you I call it? Hmm. I don't remember. Okay. Well. I'm not coaching. It doesn't. Would you ever coach? No, I told you that. I'm, I'll come out and hang out with the kids and pump their tires up, make them feel confident like I always do. But I'm, I'm not going on the road and spending the night. Then I got to pay for my own room because the, te- the, te- the teams are too cheap to give my own fucking room. Now I got to stay with like you in a hotel room. Go fuck yourself. I'm staying with my wife and chilling and doing radio and podcasts. Why am I, why am I doing that? If you want me to come out to the fucking skates, I'll hang out with the kids. But to go on a road trip to Michigan with you? You don't have to go on the you. road, dude. Oh. Oh, well, I that's do, a good I don't do that either. <laughs> do you get my drift, though? <laughs> what I'm saying? Do you get my drift, what I'm saying? Yeah. As, as a coach, yeah. like, I want my own room. I don't want to even hang out well, with anybody. You, you gonna, can I, have, I don't know what you're talking about. You can have that. Oh, yeah, but I'm paying for it. Then no, I'm going to come out of my you're pocket. You're not paying for it. Okay. Yeah, you can have all that. You have been out of touch for a while, haven't you? I want a private jet too. Did oh. you give me that? You know, hey, there's always one or two. On oh, the I, team. can I try, Can I stay on the bus? Am I going to double up on the? You know, hockey changed so much. It's always one or two private like, private planes my, on each my, team. Yeah, now. with Marty St. Louis team, but not yours, homeboy. What do you mean? I'm just fucking saying. Who's your fucking money maker? Marty St. Louis fucking flying the bodies around. He's flying himself around. But I'm going to go on a bus with you guys. No, I, I don't want to do that. Dude, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You're like looking at me like we're going on the bus. Like we don't we don't take the bus. Well, then you're lazy then. <laughs> you're half in, half out, which is even stupid. The older kids will take the bus. So what, are they walking? The are they walking? No, they fly. They fly. Teams oh, good. Fly. I, I have vertigo. I don't even want to fly. So you asked me the question. I'm giving you an answer. And then you look at me like I'm stupid for answering the question why I don't want to do it. Mm. I got vertigo. I don't even know what it means. <laughs> it I've, I've heard you say that a couple times. Yeah, it's not good. That you have vertigo. Somebody help uh, you me. You sound angry today. What's wrong with you? You sound a little bit angry. What's your problem um, today? Oh, what is no it? hitting in the OHL. Um, you, um, you said something to me that pissed me off. I forgot. What was it? Um, oh. No, I was trying to break, break down the D zone coverage on why... Just, oh, we're still back there. I don't know. Never mind. God, edit that out. <laughs> we may have to edit. We may have to edit a lot of this. No, I don't give a fuck. Let the bodies chirp. I love it. I love it. Uh, Joey Coaster's in the, uh, this edition of the Camden Strict Podcast. He was in his like hunting lodge, he, and I knew he was. Remember, I said that before <laughs> yeah. we even called him. I said he's probably like, you know, in a cabin somewhere hunting. I envisioned him. In, in like a backyard football game with Brett Favre in the middle of the, of the, of the country with wearing Wrangler, his Wrangler jeans. I got my Wrangler jeans on today. That's what Brett, remember Brett Favre's But you know what I love about those guys? Man? Wrangler. I mean, for the most part. Like, they grew up in a certain area, yeah. certain way of life. It's pretty humble, and, man. And it's hard not to change when you make the money and you have the fame and everything. I don't like think you he can't made that compl- much money, though. No, but like yeah. more than most people that are hanging out in Calvington, okay? Oh, fuck it. All right? Good point. So, yeah. I mean, totally. compared to what he would have made. And it, fame. Staying back. And, and like, you you know, like, and fame goes a long way in Detroit. You think he's like buying, you know, paying for beers and meals and stuff like that in Detroit everywhere he goes? Like hanging Hell out no. with the big boys? Whatever. So, listen, the way of life changes but at the end of the day, these guys don't look, they don't like lead who humble. they are, man. So like a couple of the questions we asked them, like, right, I'm like, you know, if they would have asked me, somebody would have asked me that question. I'm like, ah, 
I fucked his fucking ass up. I'm not fucking bad. He's just like, well, no, I did this. I'm like, oh, you're humble and I'm not? Like, God damn. It makes you think. Are you humble? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've i learned a lot, but like, I don't know. Like, I don't think I am. I am in ways. I know where I'm at in like society, I guess. Like, I need to work to make money i gotta do this i don't have 40 in a bank like i gotta fucking earn my shit so i'm humble in that way but i don't know but but it's talking about fighting stuff god i'd be like fucking i rock that guy but these guys are just so down like just humble and i'm like "Eh." Mm. i gotta change my ways i guess andy if you had to play in his era like would you have preferred to play in that era Ah uh, man, we had big guys, dude. Uh, we had big guys like Probert. But it, Probert, was, it was still different. It was, so, let okay. me ask you this: though. You did ask. It was still something. different than the the era that they played in. Man, it was different. Yeah, hooking and clutching. It would have sucked for me to try to get in on the four check because guys are hooking my fucking stomach. But it would have got me in a lot more fights because if I'm going down to say like a Jeff Brown in the early '90s, who we love, by the way, love you, Logie, love the whole Brown family. But if Jeff Brown hooked me so hard where I'm trying to get into the four check to hit a guy to make my money, I turn around and two hand him like I'm fighting you. Like I get so pissed when people hook me now. Now would I prefer being in that era? I, I probably not. But are the guys that much tougher than what I went through with Boogie and fucking Larock and Brian McGratton? Can you take uh, Probert? Is he that much tougher than Brian McGratton? I don't know. Brian McGratton was bigger than he was. Is kosher tougher than Orzy? Whew, they both have a big boy right hand. I don't know. Is Bugard tougher than Dave Brown? Whew, I don't know. Dave Brown, you want to fight Bugard toe-to-toe? Fuck, I don't fucking know if you do. Although you might knock him out. He might knock you out. But you're both getting knocked the fuck out. I don't know, Andy. It's a good question. They just had a lot more guys. You know? They did. And a lot more we household still had names. two or whatever. three each time, too, though. Yeah. McIntyre was in the mix, and fucking Trevor Gillies got called up. Jesus, fuck. Bad warrior motherfuckers. And if you talk to Coach, he's like, I didn't want to fight when I grew up. You talk to these guys, Trevor Gillies? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he fought since he was two years old. Yeah. Hardcore. But I even, like, I don't know. People like Adam Graves, just random people. Yeah. Like, you ask them, like, who's the toughest player to ever play in the game, man? They're going to say Joey, Joey Koser. I've seen it. I see people say that. I see people say Proby. I see mm-hmm. people say Twister. Twister's a different story, man. Like, Twister will make... Would Twister do great against Bugard? I don't know. Boogie was pretty good at his best time when he could hold his balance right. Mm-hmm. And he fought LaRock and did okay. He fucking beat up fucking Big McIntyre, who... God, I don't know if Twister but wants to fight di- McIntyre. I, mean, I don't know what happened. Did Bugard, did Bugard have to fight a, a Twister? Steve McIntyre was six foot five, two fifty. He could knock you out with both hands. Twister's two fifty, six foot two, that could knock you out with one hand. That could rip you probably stronger, that could roll you around a little bit more. I don't know, Andy. They're all so goddamn tough compared to what we see now. Like they were so fucking tough. But the era in the two thousand to two thousand ten was MMA. I'm going to switch on you, era. The 90s was down the pipe besides Ty Domi and maybe a couple other guys. In the 80s and 70s, it's just right down the pipe. What are you doing? Like, I'm just not just, you know, sloppy. But in the 2000s, 2010, you guys could all correct me and you could comment. Please do. Tag me. I don't give a fuck. MMA was involved. And they got to be able to switch their balance up and throw heat on both hands. That's all I got to say. Hmm. Just like you know. How long until we have, well, you, you know I did you back know. in the day. You played Parkway North. You fought a bunch <laughs> of guys. How long until we have no fighting? It's just completely I, gone. It doesn't even matter. I, I, I wouldn't even, what, what's the difference now? No one does it. No one goes two minutes. I don't give a fuck. Like, you don't fight. Just make sure there's hitting. Please, Lord, make sure there's hitting. I want guys to get rocked. I want playoffs to be rock and fucking go, motherfucker. Keep your fucking head up coming around the net. Keep your head up cutting to the zone. I'm going to, I'm going to dump the pumpkin and just go up and the fuck you. You're going to hit. Fuck that. We need hits. Part of my language, everybody. I love you all. Part, we need hits. Or this game ain't hockey, no mo. Fighting, whatever. How was your Halloween? Oh, lovely. A lot of kids come over. Can I say one thing? Were you thing? nice to the kids? I am. They hover around my house. <laughs> they hover around my house. I'm there. What do you mean I, they hover? What do you think? Live that house. Why do they want to hover at your house? Because they know where I live. And they hover around my your house because I'm generous. parents live next door and your aunt lives I'm next generous, door to them. And I give them candy. I give you options, kids. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Cam. Here's the deal. I got my fucking chocolates. I got fucking sweet tots. You pick two each. That's it. What'd you hand out? 
Listen to me and listen to me good on this one. I got pissed off. A truck, Dodge Ram, fuck you, pulls up in a trailer to our neighborhood, which is like synonymous for handing out a ton of candy. People come to our neighborhood. It's a blue collar party, Eureka. People come, they hand out candy. They love Halloween. This motherfucker shows up with 15, 17 year old kids in a track, in a trailer. They get out, they ransack my fucking house. They take all the candy. And I'm like, oh my God. They tried to wheel my wife away. I think they went in my house and stole my fucking wallet. What's and the took cutoff my age for beer. trick or treating? What's the cutoff age? Thirteen. Is it? It's thirteen, Andy. <laughs> if you're seventeen years old and you're trick or treating, Andy, remember? Do you want me to tell the story when I was doing a seventeen with forty-five mm. year old women, <laughs> and you're trick or treating and stealing my candy at seventeen? What the fuck are you doing? Go to a party. You're fucking trick or treating. You don't even have a fucking outfit on. You ransack my shit and try to wheel my broad and stole my wallet. Fuck all y'all. 13's a cutoff. 13. Motherfuckers. Did you, I, I know did these, you dress up or no? No, you can't. I'm going to call you Kate now. I put out candy. I put out everything. I have a smoke machine. I got wings cooking over here. I put Halloween deck. I'm like, happy cam. Come here. I'm inviting. You're 17 years old, Andy. And they ransack my fucking... They left trash, and I'm like, it happened. It's like a tornado came through. Like, I'm like, whoa, what happened? And I'm like, oh, our candy's gone. Mm. Fucking that sounds, 17. That sounds serious. We own 45 year old women. Sounds serious. Old, yeah. Okay. And they're fucking trick or treat. Get out of here. <laughs> well, they're putting in the back of the of the of the truck, man. Yeah, Dodge Ram. You're not from here. Yeah. People came out of town. You're not from here. You're not from here. What, what the come, fuck? Are they you? come all the way. Actually, to you have a Dodge street. Ram. You probably should be from here. Yeah. But we, fuck you. We love Dodge. Damn right we do. Especially if we got it from Belmont. Just not the guy driving the damn thing. <laughs> I know. I don't mean that. Look, I'm nice to all the kids. Like They love it, man. I used to give out hockey sticks and shit, and I'm like, I can't do that anymore. No, that's what I do now. No, you don't, Andy. I do. I give out my... Oh, are they like, I oh, give... Andy, you played... Oh, yeah, no, give no, me no, that no. hockey stick I don't do it on Halloween. I just gave away a shit ton of memorabilia, though. Stop doing when that. When I moved. Stop doing that. I handed it out I to neighbors. You, I autographed made sticks. Don't do Movers. that. Movers. I gave oh. autographed gloves. Custom skits. Give them booze or something. Give them some seltzer or whatever, man. You oh, give I'd hang on to the seltzer. Yes, you no, know that. Yeah, drink hang it, on to the no, seltzer. No, but you got to spread the wealth on that. You don't give your hockey stick away. I'd rather, by I, fucking well, I had the show. seltzer here. I had the stick here. I gave away the stick. It's an autograph no, stick. You want people to drink the seltzer so they like it. <laughs> we don't want them to play with that stick. What's that do for us? Nothing. All right, Joey Coaster coming up on this edition of the Camus Trick Podcast. Did we ask him about when he... Uh, Fuck guys up. Well, yeah, and he threw his chair on the ice. I mean, do you oh, remember? Man. Do you remember that? Do you yeah. remember being there, covering the game? Like this guy's throwing us. He's going ballistic. Like no one in a Red Wings uniform was like doing anything. You had Matt Walker, like some guys just like abusing. Some that was players. a weird time of the Blues, eh? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, 2003, they were like, oh, they're okay then. Yeah, yeah. they were. No, they were, they were, they were really good, good then. then. Yeah. You know, just not. You know, they were just starting to tail off, right? Yeah. They were just exiting the window. Prongs, when they were competitive, Al. and they could never be as good as Detroit, man. Detroit obviously always Detroit and Colorado had Dallas. these had these great teams. They were better than Dallas at times, but, yeah, but you know Dallas, Dallas won obviously won the cup, went to and the final went to twice, final twice, lost the jersey, and Colorado won a couple of cups. Detroit so Dallas, three, four. Colorado, and fucking Detroit, just the Blues just couldn't get couldn't do anything with them, mm. couldn't find it. I know. And then Chicago came. Terrible over. luck, man. Yeah, terrible luck. But they anyway. have one now. Anyway, hey, as always, the show is brought to you by Car Shield. Get that protection today. 800-857-2481. Mention that promo code CAM. You're going to save 10%. Oh, word. <laughs> Mention it. CAM. You'll save 10%. Carshield.com. A deductible may apply. You never know. Ask them about that. But structure your deal the way that you want it. You want a long-term contract? You can have it. But if you want a short-term contract, like a lot of us do, you can do that as well. For as low as $99 a month, you can have all the protection you're looking for. Again, you never know when shit's going to go down. Don't get stuck with the bill. Make sure you get stuck with the protection that you should have from CarShield and CarShield.com. Again, again, mention that promo code CAM. You're going to save 10% CarShield.com. Bud Light Seltzer, baby. 100 calories, less than a gram of sugar. BudLight.com. They'll deliver it to your house. It's that simple. They'll bring it to your house. BudLight.com. You can order it now. Check out the variety packs. Check out the Bud Light Seltzer Platinum. They got more stuff going on right now. But their flavors, black cherry, strawberry, lemon, lime, and... Mango. Mango, baby. Oh, mango. Mango. 
and get that variety pack with pineapple and uh, cranberry and mix grapefruit. And mash, baby. Shit. What'd you uh, mix recently? You're talking about mixing Kate something. He does it all. So oh, she she'll does put it. a little vodka, she'll mix some, some fruits and put a little mango in there and then kind of do whatever. Or mm. Have mango straight up. I mean, this doesn't matter when you have mango. BudLight.com. Get that ordered today. Bud Light Seltzer are unquestionably good. All right, keep it handsome and keep it handsome.com. We're fighting the ugly. Get that hoodie today. Have you gotten it? We're waiting for those pictures, man. I know it takes a couple days for delivery out of Montreal. Keep it handsome.com. Mention that promo code CAM and Strick. You're going to save 15%. Proceeds go back to the Montreal Resource Center, which fights anti bullying, which is what we're all about. Okay? And. You can get yours today. They're sick ass hoodies too, man. Unbelievable. And people come up to you at the restaurants or whatever, and you're wearing a fight ugly. Like, what, is, what does that mean? Dude, you've been wearing that every day, by the way. Can I, I tell you that? Yeah. Every Instagram post you have, I've seen you. Oh, should like, I different change days. it up then? No, you just wear the same. No, you wear the me, same. I, well, then they need to give me a white one. Day. Give me a white one then. Or just give you a second one. Just give me a second. Give me a white <laughs> one and like a pink one or something. I don't give a fuck. Are you washing that or no? No. Kate does it. <laughs> Kate does everything. You know that. She does everything. She does everything. I mean, I'm looking at your Instagram videos on Halloween. You got it going How in the parking cute lot. Was that cute? Or That's Kate, though. You see what I mean by oh, that? Oh, yeah. She had Did a, you she see had a the nice fucking setup. Dodge Ram that showed up to cheap fucking Oh, I don't phone? know if she posted that. <sighs> I didn't see it. The Dodge They're Ram. Like, what are you doing, girl? Hmm. I'm like, how old are you? you uh, didn't I just give you candy? Now you're trying to take my wife away from me? Like, oh, okay. While you're wearing the fight ugly shirt, yeah. the well, hoodie, which is sick. Shirt? It's so you're nice. He's it's, being a bully. It's so nice you're going to wear it two weeks in a row, man. Shut up. That's how nice it is for, for fight ugly. But you need one. If you don't have it, you need to get it today. Matthew Kachuk has one. A bunch of guys. We might send one out to Milan Lucic, by the way, who just joined us. Yeah, yeah. He was great with us. So check it out, keepithandsome.com, your shampoos, your conditioners, your hair gels, your paste, so your foaming good, cream. So like, what good. does Kate say when you walk in? And she's, she's like, like, she's like, she's, she's no, like I, knows you're no, there you without like, even seeing like your face. Oh, my God, I what smell is handsomeness. What what is that? Oh, there's yeah. Cam. Can we make love? Can you make love to me right now? I'm like, oh, let me, uh, I might want to jump in the shower. She's like, no, no, I want that stank. I want to smell your hair product. Get on me now. That's what she says. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Close the blinds. <laughs> the neighbors are watching. It does smell good, though, man. It does smell great. And you don't have to put it in two or three times a day, man. You put it in once, your hair never moves. And it's not that stiff-looking look, nah, you know, no, either. It's, it's, you can't it's even suave. tell you have any in there. Mm -hmm. But if you have a sick flow or no flow, you need keepithandsome.com. You get that scalp little moisturizer. Get oh. that beard moisturizer, too, for those Tangles. of you that have the beards. Get that we have beard not moisturizer. Mm -hmm. No, I can't grow one. Yeah, I know that. I started growing one last week, actually, and then now oh, I looks, shaved it, it off. Sweet. I started, I started <laughs> shaving it off. <laughs> so keepithandsome.com. Again, get your hoodie and send us some pictures on our Instagram or Twitter accounts showing us uh, that you're uh, part of the uh, Fight Ugly community, and we're fighting the ugly. We're getting rid of bullying that exists throughout North America, not just in Montreal, but everywhere. So make a difference today. Buy your hoodie. How about bellman.com? Check out the new inventory, the pre-owned inventory. They got everything you could need as we head into the colder months, the winter, the trucks, the SUVs. I want that the Buick Jeeps, Enclave. The oh, you want that Buick Enclave? That Buick. With captain seats? Dude, I look badass. A little off white. A little look off white, like a pearl thing. color. Yeah, you look good in oh, that. Man, like this, I'm a fucking Buick motherfucker. <laughs> like, oh, Cam's driving a Buick. Oh, my word. Like, I'm, I'm getting one of them bad boys. Cadillac That's Buick what I'm GMC. To do. On one side of the street, the other side, it's the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. I'm looking for that Escalade, man. I am getting one very, very soon. You can get yourself the Jeep. Make sure you're taken care of for the winter months, though. We all know that you need that vehicle that can get you around and get you from point A to point B. You can do that with Bellman. Again, in Troy, Missouri, one side of the street, the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. On the other side, it's the Cadillac, the Buick, the GMC. Buick. All right, Joey Koser. Dude. Top five? Yeah, man. He's up there, Are you dude. putting him top five? I, I know think Chaser did. I think you've changed your top five. I've changed five, a couple. Like, I, no, because he's 5'11". And that's the only reason. Like, I'm not putting him top five because he's 5'11". And Ty's not top five either in my book because I'm looking at it as really? a fight. I'd rather fight Joey Kosher than Dave Brown. I'd rather fight Joey Kosher than Chris Simon. I'd rather fight Joey Kosher than a lot of guys mm. because I know his right hand's there, but I'll tie that motherfucker up. Now you're going to throw lefts against my right, or you'll throw lefts against my lefts, mm. and I'm comfortable doing that. What if he catches you with a right? And he catches me. But I know I could, I, then that's my fucking bad. Mm. But if you catch it with, with a guy's fighting you at 6'5", and he catches you, sometimes yeah. it's not your bad because he's too yeah. big. 
All right, we go out to the middle of the wilderness. But you knew that, Andy. You're Let's a tough guy at Parkway <laughs> fucking narc. We go out to the middle of the wilderness, to the cabin. Hey, no shit. <laughs> he kind of cut out a couple times. That's he did. Good. Hey, that's what happens, man. No cell service out in the woods. Here's Joey Koser on the Coacher. Cabin Strict Podcast. Coker. Coacher. <laughs> what are you doing right yeah, now? Dude. Are you just hanging out there in Michigan? What I picture you like hunting or something I all know. day long. Hunting with no gun. <laughs> Well, funny you should say that I'm sitting in my hunting cabin right now, but I'm out splitting wood, getting ready for the winter. Look at you. Where's that at? Is that in the middle of nowhere? You got a little lodge somewhere. You make a fire. You cook. Like, explain that whole situation. I just got, yeah, I got a, 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 log, a little cabin out here. I got a wood burning stove in it. Uh, I come out here and spend the day and probably have probably 70 cords of wood split right now and. I do that uh, along with my other job in the automotive industry. Really? You have two jobs? Just because you like play for the Red Wings, is that like automatic? You have to have a job in the automotive industry or what? Like you have two jobs? What, what's your other job? Yeah. Well, my other job my own job in the automotive industry, but uh, I guess I can't call this a job. This is kind of a hobby pastime. <laughs> Are you still the president of uh, the Red Wings alumni? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, about 10, 11 years now, I think I've been president. So that's still a job, too, isn't it? Like, you got to organize different shit and do this. I mean, I watch what Bruce Affleck and Losey and Chaser have to do here. Like, that's kind of a job, too, isn't it? Not so much for me. I, I They just run stuff by me. I've got, <laughs> we got a pretty good crew that has been running this for a long time, so I don't uh, I don't spend a lot of time doing too much of that. Oh, I man, love I that. It. All those guys here, they act they, they like bitch it's a job. They bitch about it so much, And you're Joey. like, ah, no, it's not oh, a job. Let me get back to killing things with my bare hands. Yeah, no shit. So this is, see, I love this, Joey, because that's exactly how I would envision you. You know, like just being in the cabin, middle of the it. woods, fire going, splitting wood. Oh, yeah. Is that the Saskatchewan in you? Like, is that how we should picture what goes on back in Calvington or what? Yeah, that's pretty much how my my family and the farm was. And you forgot to mention, I'm enjoying one of my Anheuser-Busch favorite uh, drinks, too. Oh, ooh, <laughs> listen. Yeah. Hey, we expect nothing less. No, I know. A little mango, a little Bud Light seltzer for you, baby. We St. love Louis, that. you got to know. <laughs> yeah, damn right we know. We Absolutely. love that. Absolutely. So it's like almost like we should be playing like backyard football with Brett Favre in a Wrangler commercial or something. With the Wrangler know? jeans on. <laughs> I could see that. Well, shit, man. Uh, are you watching your... Um, your fights on YouTube? That's what everybody does from Saskatchewan, don't they? Or is that just Chaser? I do. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. Chaser might. <laughs> well, you ever go, so do you ever like, uh, you know, go back and kind of, you get bored, you're out in the, the camp, you made a fire, you're having to come up bear. It's like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to skim through some of the past and watch me absolutely murder some guys. Like, you don't ever do that? And once in a while, you know, I, you get, you get a, a notification of, I don't know, I was, I was following something like a uh, hockey yeah. fight or something, and they'll, they'll send other says, I remember, and I'd rather see other people go. Yeah, hey, we're kind of losing you. Stay there. We, we just heard you just now at the tail end. It sounds good. We'll see. Hopefully, we don't lose you again. We can keep this uh Keep the connection the way it is. How are you feeling, though? Because everyone talks about your right hand, and, and, and we all know how hard you oh, threw and whatever. Oh, like, God. it didn't matter if you were hitting a guy in the helmet or not. Like, it looked like you threw just as hard. Is, is, your, is your hand in good shape? How's your hand? We always ask how everybody's head is. How's your hand? Oh, well, my hand actually is really good. I mean, it's uh, it went through a lot of stuff. I had five surgeries throughout my uh, career on it. But now I haven't – I mean, you know, we don't throw punches anymore, so it heals up pretty quickly. You have so arthritis when the weather changes a little bit, Joey. Like anything, like the hands kind of ache a little bit. I mean, God, you, you, I mean, you tortured that right hand in so many different ways. I mean, does it ache at all? No, not really. I mean, it's it gets stiff in the cold weather or the rainy weather, but uh, it goes away pretty quick. I'm pretty active, so it uh, feels good. And I'm I'm a little surprised. I was I was worried about it, but uh, it's held up very well. Well, we do hear stories about you and. I mean, there's a lot of folklore about you, and some people told me that maybe it was Ch Chaser. A lot of it comes through Chaser, but one time that you, he said that you just kept hitting your damn hand to build up the calluses on your knuckles so you could protect your hands more. And, and, and on top of that, how would you learn how to throw a big punch that way? And, a lot, and my, my point is, 
back in the day when you came up, like, there wasn't any boxing stuff going on. Like we all did that in the, the late 2000s, kind of when the 2000s happened, we kind of mixed the intermix of mixed martial arts and involved. But how would you get such a big right hand going? You know, I don't know. I, uh, I was playing back in Yorkton in the Saskatchewan junior league and my coach at the time, I don't know if you know the name, Jerry James. He, uh, He's pretty infamous for playing in the CFL Grey Cup game and the Stanley Cup playoffs in the same year. Mm -hmm. I think he played for the Maple Leafs and uh, might have been the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But he he played pro and he told me, he says, you've got to do something well if you're going to ever want to go anywhere. And I hadn't even had a fight up until that time. And I just, I just somehow I got into a fight and I enjoyed it and I did pretty well and I just continued on. How old were you? So that, how old were you for your first fight then? Uh, probably 15. And did you enjoy it? Like, did you say, wow, I kind of like this? Like, when did you realize that you were, like, not just tough but could hurt people and, and could make a living out of being tough? I Probably my first year in Saskatoon, I we went on a West Coast road trip out to uh, British Columbia, and we played some pretty tough teams, and there was a coach out there named Bill LaForge, and he had a lot of big guys, and I got in a fight with one of his tough guys, and – Got a lucky punch in and knocked him out and got a lot of notoriety for it. And that just uh, kind of grew from there. Confidence is everything, eh, Joey? I mean, it really is. Like, you need to catch somebody like that early on in your career and be like, oh, fuck, okay, I could, I could do this. But you're telling me – go ahead. No, I was going to say, but it could go the opposite way, too. Totally. If I had got knocked out my first fight, I may have said, screw this, I'm not doing that. Damn right. Or you get beat – but, okay, then it goes another way where you get beat up and you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. I could do this. Fight me. You know, right? Like, I think that happened to me. I didn't knock anybody out my first. I think I got my ass kicked. And I'm like, that didn't even hurt that bad. And you're five years older than me. Fuck you. Let's go. So, like, you're telling me when you were young, when you're starting to play hockey and you're bumping around a little bit, you're like, nah, you didn't have that swagger. Like, I'll fuck all you guys up. You didn't have any of that until you knocked that first guy out in juniors. Yeah, I never I never had a fight ever growing up. I mean, I guess maybe once in a while in a playground. But uh, I didn't didn't have any interest in it and my dad I don't think my dad ever was in a fight himself so I didn't uh, it wasn't in the blood and then like I said I got got in one road trip got a few uh, good fights in and that just uh, set me on my way yeah. when do you start training to fight in the in the NHL like did you ever focus on that were you all about hockey training or or would you like put some work in like preparing yourself to fight too no no we never I guess the only the only training we did is we got a scouting report before every game on who was tough on the other team and if they were lefty or righty, but we never lefty right. we never did anything specific for fighting. We just basically specific for hockey because we had to be able to play the game in order to stay in the league for a while. Yeah, yeah. and you scored some goals in junior and whatever. Fucking 81 I mean, points. Yeah, I mean, so you put up some points. What about having a punching bag in the dressing room? Was that in New York? Like, where was that? I saw something about you having, like, a punching bag that you would use in the dressing room. They they had those in uh, in Detroit, and but it was we didn't do a whole lot with it. Me and Proby would just go and whack it a few times, but uh, we weren't we weren't uh, the hardest workers when it came to that. We just liked to go out and have fun, so we'd get out of the rink as soon as we could after practice. But uh, no, we didn't uh, we didn't have any trainers that uh, taught us anything. There was one time we met with Emmanuel Stewart. And all we did was just talk to him and say hi to him. He never gave us any any advice because, I mean, it's totally different fighting boxing than uh, standing on skates. The Cam and Strick Podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on and you know right off the bat you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM. Mm. Or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now back to the Cam. interview. Yeah, well, I, fuck. Thank God you didn't learn because you've been throwing uh, your your rights as, your lefts as hard as your rights, and that would have been really goddamn scary. But you're talking about Proby. And hang with him in, you know, late 80s, early 90s, all that stuff. Like, God, ex were you guys best buddies? Like, did you know? I mean, did you guys talk to each other all, all the time? Do you, do you know a, a lot about him on and off the ice? 
I knew a lot of, well, for a couple of years I lived with them. I, I didn't know a lot of what was going on off the ice. I mean, I read about it in this book and I was pretty shocked at a bunch of that, but, but when we were at the rink together, yeah, we talked a lot. We, we talked about uh, the guys in the other team and then we joke once in a while, who's going to fight Secord first or who's going to fight so-and-so first. And we, we were pretty polite about it. We took turns once in a while. Well, so he let you have C-cord, yours. you both want to <laughs> fuck his ass up. C-cord, that's, that's funny. <laughs> hey, what should kids know? Like, there's a whole generation of kids who never got to see Bob Probert play. I mean, like, for me, like, growing up, like, he was the baddest yeah. man in the oh, NHL. Yeah. You're right there with him, Twister, all these guys who were household names in the league. Like, what would you tell kids that ask you now about, about Bob Probert? Well, I think, well, Bob Probert, in my opinion, uh, was the best enforcer of all time. He was... Uh, extremely talented he was he had great hands around the net uh shoot one year when he went to the all-star game he had 29 goals and oh. 398 minutes or something like that so <laughs> but oh. he was like i said he was he he didn't get mad very hot often either he uh he just he fought to fight as a living every once in a while when he got mad you can really see it but uh he was just he was a he was just awesome to be around i mean getting the right shotgun with him we'd uh I felt pretty safe going into any arenas, especially places like Chicago and, and even St. Louis. St. Louis always had a good, tough team. But as long as I knew I had Bobby uh, riding shotgun with me, we were going to be okay. Yeah, you were going to be okay. Probably more than okay. But we <laughs> had your buddy Chaser on the other day, and he said he, he put you in the top, but he didn't put Proby in there. And I go, I, I, you know, we kind of went back and forth, and I'm like, Bob still knocked guys out. He didn't knock guys out like you knock guys out. But, damn, he would – he would trade with anybody, and he'd figure out how to make a a a, 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 a an ass kicking off the bat turn into a long drawn out brawl. In your opinion, he is one of the biggest baddest dudes, if not one two, right? I I always put him as number one. I mean, his fights. He, he was a slow starter in all of his fights. He, uh, oh yeah. He probably got hit a few times, but if a fight got past thirty seconds. I had the other guy was in big trouble because Proby didn't tire out. I don't know how, but he was, uh, he could just go forever. And, uh, like I said, I, I respect him. And I, I was, um, I went to the hall of fame. I think it was last year or something, the hall of fame game. Cause some of the Red Wings were involved and they, they put in Vaclav Nedimansky because he is a pioneer for, for coming over from Europe. I believe it was why, well, I said to everybody in the Hall of Fame, Bob Probert is the best at what he did. Why is he not in the Hall of Fame? That, to me, that's uh, that's something they should address. Well, I like yeah. That. Well, if fighting is legal, wow. if you're going to have fighting, you might as well recognize who. And he made the All Star. Like, he who, did who a lot, the best man. at it. Absolutely. Like, did you, like, when you went into a fight, like, you, when you knew you hurt somebody, Joey, like, were you the type of guy to call them afterwards? Like, you have any examples of that where you had to check in on somebody? No, because back when I was playing, we didn't have phone numbers or social media or cell phones or anything. But I mean, I well, I know for one example, I and Chaser probably told the story. We're playing in New York, and I was going to hit him. He kind of spun away, and I hit him from behind. And he, I went right into the locker room after the or after he left the period. I walked back right past the security into the locker room and apologized to him because I, I felt bad. And I guess we felt bad knocking people out, but I mean that was our that was our job, that was our living, and we were taking a risk just as much as they were taking a risk. So you hit Chaser from behind and you apologized? Really? <laughs> you should have been did. like, "Fuck like you!" He would do the same thing to you. Are you <laughs> kidding? <laughs> no, I get that. No, it, it, look with a with a punch, it's one thing. Okay, you were going toe to toe. Let's go. If I catch you with one, I'm not going to apologize for it. But if you catch somebody awkwardly with a hit, though, you're like, ah, fuck, my bad, dude. Like, I, I might have to call you. Like, there's a big difference between the two, in my opinion. Right. And I guess there was times on the ice that I kind of apologized. I know I had a fight once with Ken Danico, and oh. we kind of, we, I wrestled him down. I think he tore his knee or his ankle, and I could hear him scream. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of on top of him, and I, I apologized to him. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, to, didn't mean to hurt you like that. So, I mean, there was times like that. In awkward situations, but there was times when I was going toe to toe, and if I knocked somebody out, I didn't give a shit. I was did my job. 
Fuck, who did you fuck up? <gasps> Eagles. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Eagles. God. What was he thinking, though? He's just like lollygagging he with was, it. Was he young, right? He was a and young Eagles kid is kind of a middleweight at time, right, though, Joey? Like, and then you're like, you want to fucking trade with me? And he kind of just kept his chin right there and like, oh, fuck. Ah. You didn't call him, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't call him. Like, like I said, we don't. We didn't know anybody back then. I guess you ran into him in the bar once in a while after a game. Yeah. You talked to him. Uh, I mean, back in the day, we used to spend the night at all after every game. So we, we'd run into him once in a while, but uh, not not very often. We used to flying commercial. You know, flying commercial. Hey, oh. you, some guys just have that look. Where it looks like they just block, you know, black out, like when they're fighting, like they get so mad, they get so caught up in the moment, they're angry, they're pissed off. Like, was that you? Did you fight angry? Did you fight pissed off, or were you always under control? No, I didn't. I probably in all my fights fought angry a dozen times, maybe. I just, like I said, I knew it was a job, and I enjoyed doing it. But uh, there was only there was a small handful of times where somebody really fucking pissed me off, and I had to go after him. Yeah, give me yeah. one of those. Hey, did you ever did you ever catch Claude Lemieux or no? <laughs> no, I, well, no, we couldn't catch him. Me and Ty Domi, there was a brawl one one game in in New York, and uh, we were actually the game was in New Jersey. And at the end of the game, there was a bench clearing brawl, and Ty and I chased him onto the bench, and he hid behind a cop. <laughs> wow, we had him on the podcast, by the way. I think I don't I think he, he didn't bring I'm that up. <laughs> hey, I. As much as you hated playing with him, I guarantee I'd love to be a line mate or teammate because oh, he, fuck yeah. everything he did was was for the team. Damn right. Yeah, but I, mean, I saw the video when he went after that. Um, I think it was Kozlov, right? He was going after Kozlov. <laughs> well, I don't blame him. And, oh, when he was yeah, yeah, and 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 I think you were tangled up with Messier, like you were just ragdolling Messier, not Mark Messier, the other Messier. And all of a sudden, you turn around and you see Claude Lemieux just giving it to Kozlov, <laughs> and you couldn't get to him. That's got to be the most helpless it's feeling. Like a bad man. dream. I mean, that's when you get angry, though, isn't it, Joey? Yeah, when 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 people take advantage of of your players. Like I had one one example was uh, Rick talking. I've talked to Rick many times after, and we were playing a game, playoff game, and he took a cheap shot or he slew footed Iserman. He got Ooh. his two minute penalty, and Scotty Bowman, of course, when there was about 20 seconds left in uh, in his penalty. He had me on the ice, and and that's why what I respect about Rick is he'd come out of the penalty box, he skated right up to me, dropped the gloves, and he said, "I knew you were coming for me, so I might as well do it on my turn." Yeah, he's a bad boy. He's he's a tough dude. Honest, fucking hard worker. Played yeah, a lot absolutely. of game. Did his shit. Now, I want to talk about coaches. We don't talk all fighting. You get a lot of things that we we want to kind of get into here. Explain a different coach, like Scotty Bowman, Mike Keenan, like. Two completely different. Like, what's the difference, in your opinion, between those two? Well, I won a couple of both of them. So I, I think very highly of both of them. But Mike was Mike was an intimidator. He tried to, I want to say, bully his players. He tried to make every player play the way he wanted. Um, uh, he called them out. He embarrassed them in the room. Room and some guys were able to pull through that, and some guys weren't. And uh, he was successful, but I, I, some in some instances, I thought he was a little unfair to the players. Well, Scotty is uh, Scotty never did that. Scotty was very manipulative, but he he did it in a nice way. He did it in a confusing way. Cause you could walk in the dressing room five different days in a row, and and he'll say something different. Either he'll, he'll say hi to you, or he'll just turn his nose up to you, or he'll. So you'll never know. He kept you on your toes all times, and I—that's what I loved about Scotty because he just didn't work. Yeah, I didn't know. We kind of lost you there. guys. Yeah, now there you are. Now yeah, you're. You're back. No, we got the. We're no, you, you don't know where you're at. I kind of lose the same way with that too. Yeah. Like yeah. just, you just sometimes you'll smile at you. Sometimes he won't pat you on the ass, and then if he doesn't, you're like, oh god, what but, I do? But I want to get back to Keenan though because it seems like Keenan like. Yeah, he, yeah he, he might give a lot, you know, a lot of players a lot of shit, like you said. And like we've done a lot of interviews with guys who play we for him. him. Some on. guys don't like him. We've had him on. Some guys do. But I feel like for guys that played your role, man, he would, he would give you the utmost respect for guys who played your role. Am I right about that? He was, he was pretty good, yeah. The only, the only thing that I guess Keenan was one of those coaches that didn't, I guess the word would be, he didn't give fair – it wasn't fair to everybody. And even in the fact where 
when I played for Scotty Bowman, I always knew I was going to play, whether it be three to eight minutes or 10 minutes a game. There was games with Keenan that you wouldn't even get a shift oh, during the entire game. Horrible. Which that, that was, to me, was the stupidest thing in the world. But that, he was the coach at the time, and he did that to a lot of people. That's so fucking horrible, by the way, Joey. But go I ahead, know. Andy. All right, listen, I want to go back to, like, your childhood, like, growing up with Wendell and, like, Barry Melrose. And we had both of them on, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, we've had all these guys on, man. I mean, just, like... You know, did you always want to be a hockey player? Did you know that was going to be your calling? Or, like, did you think you'd just be, end up, you know, kind of hanging out and growing up in Calvington? Like, what was your vision as a young kid? Well, I, my vision was to, to play hockey. I enjoyed the game. I loved it. Uh, that's pretty much all we had. You know, at one point, I asked my dad for a snowmobile, and he said his basic answer was, I'll get, I'll get you a snowmobile, but you got to sell your skates. You can't do both. So, um, it, it was a passion to play the game, but there was never a, a thought or a expectation to take it to the level where I, where I was lucky enough to get to. It was just more of a love of the game, and it just kept rolling and turning out that way. I mean, is hockey everything? Okay, so you weren't aggressive as a kid. Like you said, Like if you were, then you'd probably get a lot more fights as a, as a kid. But like, were you a good athlete? Like, was hockey everything where you grew up? Or Saturday nights, you're watching Hockey Night in Canada. Like, every night, there's something hockey, hockey this. Like, was that the case as a kid? Well, yes. It was always hockey. We're always, every chance, if we, uh, at uh, lunchtime at school, we'd, we'd go and skate at the rink for an hour or during lunchtime and so oh, wow. stuff like that. But when you say hockey, 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 when I was growing up, there was one game on Saturday night, Hockey Night in Canada. And that's the only game we could ever watch. So it was always a family affair. Hey, let's talk about the new Bud Light Seltzer. Oh, yeah. It's an easy drinking hard seltzer that comes in four delicious fruit flavors. Mm. Black cherry, Ooh. strawberry, yes. lemon lime, and Cam's favorite, mango. Oh, With mango. only 100 calories, 5% alcohol, and less than a gram of sugar, mm -hmm. you might as well have a few tonight or this weekend. Mm. Go to BudLight.com to buy Bud Light Seltzer online. Must be 21 years of age or older. Bud Light Seltzer unquestionably good yeah now back to the interview so yeah. all right what was your relationship with wendell like though like who was who was like the bigger brother who was the little brother and and how much did you look up to him just as a player and and the career that he had oh, i i respect everything he did and the way he played uh, his effort uh, i mean he was one of the best body checkers oh yeah open ice body checkers he Shit, he never turned down a fight. Him and Proby probably had three or four fights, and Wendell did very poorly in them. But he always came back, and uh, I guess I would be more of a big brother to him, but Wendell's oldest brother, Don, was the best man at my wedding, so I, I spent a lot more time with his, uh, older, his older brother. God, when he came onto the scene, Wendell, though, what, did you see anything like it? I know you could probably throw Lindros in there, too, when he came on young, but... God, he was killing guys. Lindros didn't go toe to toe like Wendell did, though. And so he's you, six, six. you have to try. Yeah, but 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 Lindros didn't scare you with a fight. Wendell was a trifecta. He could score a fucking wrister down the line. He could knock you out with a hit, and he'll knock you out toe to toe, throwing down the pipe. Like, do you? Is there? Will we ever see anything like that ever again? Well, no, you won't, because there's no fighting anymore, and there's then very little body checking anymore. The game, the game has changed. And it's, I hate to say it, it's gone probably more European. But uh no, for, for, for his size, dude, I don't think I don't think he was hundred and ninety pounds at no. one point. And for the way he would physically play, he was uh he was one of the one of the best ever as well. And like you said, his shot, he's probably one of the hardest wrist shots of anyone in the league. Trifecta, baby. Man. When yep. you guys go back there, I mean, do people just like clear the streets? Oh my God! Here comes Joey. Uh, here comes here's the Wendell. Boy, <laughs> the fucking boys walking down. I mean, Cleopatra. What, what was it like going you know, home, especially when you were like, you know, fully recognized and established in the NHL? It was pretty cool. I mean, we'd always try and schedule our our week or two on the farm the same time. Taser was home the same time. Wendell was home, or Barry was home, and then, but early on, we'd always come back. I guess early on in our career, we'd always come back and play uh, play fastball. So we'd mm. we'd be back all summer, and we'd be together every weekend playing ball. So we had a lot of fun. I know. I hear yeah. all about these. Best Chaser best takes this stuff so seriously. I like, know how important. Like how serious <laughs> was the softball league that we hear about? <laughs> it was it was serious. I mean, we'd go play in tournaments every weekend, and 
And a lot of those tournaments, we played baseball or saw a fastball like we played hockey. I mean, if you <laughs> if somebody was in your base path, you go right through them. You didn't uh, you didn't go around anybody. We were uh, we were a pretty uh, aggressive team back in the in the early or mid eighties. I remember my dad doing that too, Andy. But wouldn't they? You slide into third base hard. Shit's oh, going yeah. down. Oh, yeah. But, Shit's going but, down. But wouldn't the other team, don't they know who you guys are? Like, I mean, are they like, no shit. they're not looking to start shit, are they? Come on now. Come on. Well, you got to remember, we were going back and we were 19, 20, 18, maybe 21. We're young kids. And we're playing against 40 and 50 year old men that are a hell of a lot bigger. Yeah. And they probably, they didn't want to take shit from us. And uh, there was, there was a few instances where there was some bench clearing brawls, but uh, nothing really bad came out of any of them yeah sure yeah another bad came out of it joey when that 50 year old somebody's man, or, no, orbital the, bone the 50 year old man came out of left field like i'm coming into the pile and he gets a, takes a fucking right from you yeah nothing bad i think he died two days later listen 94 you you, you went to, that that whole thing was probably the most i don't know anticipated stanley cup ever uh, am i wrong on it that was big, man. you got two huge markets you got you got fucking mess calling games against, you know, just like crazy stuff happening in the biggest market in the world. Like describe that whole scenario, the whole scene going through that Stanley Cup run. Yeah, that's uh, the, you just talked about probably the greatest leader I ever played with, Mark Messier. We were uh, we were we were a good I mean, we were a great team. We uh, won the president's trophy that year. We had the number one power play, the number one penalty killing, which, of course, I wasn't on. But uh, <laughs> we know uh, we 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 had uh, we had New Jersey. New Jersey was probably as good or maybe even better than we were. But uh, I think it was Game Six. We just lost Game Five. We're getting ready uh, the day before the game, having practice, and Mike Keenan calls everybody in and basically throws us off the ice and calls us a whole bunch of pieces of shit because we couldn't beat this team. And and Matt basically came in the room and said, "Let's win it in spite of him." And uh, media come out and mess was just being mess. He said, we're going to win tomorrow. Well, the next morning, the front page of every oh, newspaper yeah. is Messier guarantees win. Yep. <laughs> and then he goes and gets a, a hat trick in the third period to force a game seven. And then game seven, another double overtime game Or I don't think people know. And I, I, I'm pretty sure I got this right. I think Stefan Mateau scored us another double overtime goal in that series as well. So he did. It was a pretty amazing series. My toe, yeah. my toe. Play with his son. Yeah. Man, so that's interesting you, you bring up that story. So Keenan was basically like almost psychologically yeah. trying to tell you guys, hey, you can't get it done. And, and Messier, so like all this for, uh, folklore about him, you know, guaranteeing the victory and then scoring a hat trick, he was just responding to a question, but also probably a little bit pissed off because of what Keenan just told you guys? Yes. Yeah, like you said, when, when Keenan left the room, Mess kind of stood up and said, you know what, screw that. We're a great group in here. We can win this thing. We can do it. Let's just win it in spite of him, and, and we'll walk together forever. But he was, he was right. I mean, he, and, but again, with the same thing, I think Keenan knew what he was doing. Keenan was trying to fire up his leaders, and, and it worked. Even like benching Brian Leach and shit, like, God. Like, that was doing that in that market like you, you I know he wasn't playing great at the time like what what was that the, was that against the devils where they kind of bench him and everybody's like what the fuck you could just see on the bench where everybody's just like uh what's going on like how confusing was that whole scenario well that that was my and I don't know why you'd ever bench probably the, he won didn't he win the constable fight that year I mean he was phenomenal he was uh I don't know why they would do that, but maybe that's another way to light a fire under a player. Yeah, you yeah. get his attention that way. Andy Murray would have you know, benched me. Listen, Richter doesn't get enough talk, like for how good that guy yeah. was as a goalie. Like, how good was Mike Richter, oh. especially in that whole playoff? Oh, he was he was phenomenal. He was uh, Mike Richter was a, uh, and this is no disrespect to any goalies. He was the first goalie that I ever played with that was in tip top shape, uh, stayed and worked out after practice. Uh, didn't want to leave the ice practice. Just, just loved the position. And I think right after he won the Stanley cup, didn't he go and lead the U S team for the world cup mm -hmm. that same year or something? I and mean, he was, he was a superstar. Yeah. No, a couple years later, you bring up Messier though, being the best leader that you've ever had. And you played all those years with Iserman. Like 
A any similarities Ooh. there? Any differences? Like, how do you how do you break those two down when you compare them side by side? Well, I, I just I, this is no disrespect to Stevie because Stevie was an amazing leader as well. Messier was more of a vocal, um, in your face or in somebody else's face, elbows to the face. And if Stevie was quieter, Stevie Stevie didn't say a whole lot, but when he said something, everybody just stood up and listened. And but the other thing about Stevie is uh, Stevie was was, was um, so brave on the ice. I mean. He'd be the first one diving to block a shot in a penalty kill, and he'd come off the ice, and there's a bunch of us on the bench saying, get the hell out of the way of that shot. We don't want you hurt. No shit. It's not that important right now. So he was a, he was a leader on the ice as well. So they're both great, great leaders. Who's the best Russian you played with? Is that a good question, Andy? I don't mm, know. No, you bad. give me a that's fucking look bad. there. Not, that's not bad. Go ahead, Joey. <laughs> Pure skill was maybe Kovalev. Yeah, Ooh, I was gonna say that. He, he was he was he's on the pod. He was incredible that year too in '94, man, unbelievable. Yeah, maybe overall talent and speed was Fedorov. Yeah, uh, hardest hitting was Konstantinov. Oh. Uh, the smartest, the smartest, and just could see the ice almost as well as Wayne Gretzky was Larry on up. So. Larry on. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Wiley overall. veteran Fatisov. Probably he was the ringleader of the Russian group in the locker room, wasn't he? Absolutely, yeah. Damn he, right. Uh, he controlled that group, but uh, that was, again, that's another Scotty Bowman move. He decided to put all five of them on the ice at the same time, and if you ever look at any old videos of those those five, people wouldn't touch the puck. They they refused to dump the puck in. Yep. You know, I'm curious, though, Joey, man. Like, you grow up, small-town Canada, and now you're in a dressing room, like, people all over the world, including all these Russians. Like, what was your impression – of Russian players yeah. before you play with these guys? And then how did they change your opinion if they did? You know, I, I was open to it because sure, we wanted, we wanted the best players possible to win. And they, everyone we played with was, uh, was very, very talented. The very first Russian, I believe that I, that I met was uh, Sergei Fedorov. I think that was right before I was traded from the uh, wings to the, to the Rangers. And then I go to the Rangers and, I got Sergei Zubov, and oh god, yeah. There's another superstar. I, there, you asked a question about '94, and I bet I, I bet there's not another team that ever happened to. But our regular season point leader was Sergei Zubov, yeah, a defenseman. No. Crazy. And our and our playoff scoring leader was Brian Leach, the other defenseman. Wow. So it's it was a yeah pretty unique situation. But I I never played with a bad Russian. I mean, Kozlov was was one of the toughest Russians I ever played with as well. And he, he, he took all of Claude Lemieux. He, he'd score goals. He scored the biggest goals for us a lot of times. He got fucked up too. Oh God. Stevens fucked him up in 90. Whew, God. I remember that. That was a bad one. That was a bad one. That was, that was tough. Well, would you, would you get, well, first off, who was the most popular player in that whole era where you got fucking Fedorov, Dayton, fucking you know who, doing his thing. He's got the Nike skates cruising around. Like, who's the most popular guy in that scene in Detroit? I popular for the fans was always Eiserman. Okay. I mean, to this to this day, I mean, Eiserman's shit. They named the street after him. He's you now he's running the team, but he was uh, he was the heart and soul of the entire team. He was the blood and guts of the entire team, and. Uh, Handsome. So definitely him, and then Nick Lidstrom was uh, yeah, yeah. was a real quiet superstar that uh, kind of snuck up on everybody. Time to talk about our boy Dan Bellman. Bellman.com. That's with two N's, not one. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Hey, check out the new inventory. Check out the pre-owned vehicles. You looking for a Chrysler, a Dodge, a Jeep, a Ram? How about a Cadillac or a Buick GMC? All in Troy, Missouri. Get your new wheels in time for the winter. Mm, 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 mm. Now back to the interview. Mm. Yeah, he did. Jesus. Shut down everybody too. Anybody ever yeah. scare anybody ever scare you? Scare no. No, there was times where I was uh, maybe a little concerned. I know there was one uh, one game we're playing in this guy named Link Gates was oh, a this guy named Link Gates. Native. Come on, Joey. Come on, Joey. Well, no, he was a Michigan native, and I didn't know anything about him. And he's 
He got called up for his first game for Minnesota, and he went on Detroit TV and papers and said he was going to come after me and end my career and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, first shift we got out there, we had a, a little brawl, and I tuned him in pretty well. So that uh, that ended that story. I love oh, that. Oh, he was a big were you a, Were you a shit talker, Joey? Like, would you talk shit on the ice or no? Uh, a little bit, not too bad. Not not like Draper and Maltby and some of those other guys. Or, or Chaser. Chaser. Not like Chaser. <laughs> See, no, he just did his did thing. Chaser no, he just knocked ask you to say his Joey name just knocked you times out. of this interview or what? <laughs> oh, no, but hey, I do have to, I do got to tell you a Chaser story. And it okay. was a classic move by him. We're right at the, uh, uh, the face-off was right by our bench. And that's where Scotty Bowman was coach. And Scotty didn't say much. But he looked down on the ice, and Chaser was out there. And he, he said to Chaser in front of all of us, he said, Chase, why do they put you on the ice? And Chase turned around and looked at our bench. He said, I have no idea. He said, I was out drunk with Shanahan and Coaster last night, and I'm so hungover, I shouldn't be out here. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right to your coach. Classic. That's the best. Take That's that such a good line. <laughs> oh, what about Dave Brown? Big lefty. He's hard to deal with. You're a righty. You go. Oh, I mean, tell me I about was, that. I was lucky. I never did have to fight Brownie. Oh. I played with. I played junior with Brownie in, in the Saskatchewan Junior League, and he oh, took God. me under his wing and kind of worked with me. And every time we played, he'd come up and say hi to me, and he never, ever wanted to fight, and I thank God he didn't. He was – because – because people don't know, like, when you're a righty and you go against a guy that's a couple inches taller than you and he throws left down the pipe, it's hard to deal with. You got to find your grip. You got to get your rhythm down. Like, they're going to catch you. Fighting lefties is different. Oh. Shit, he was six foot five and I was not even six feet. So, yeah, it's, when you've got that kind of reach difference, you don't want to fight toe to toe with a lefty. Yeah, man. See, Andy, write that down yeah, when you no. fight that lefty, uh, the. the, the the car shield guy that's going to fight you at coach. <laughs> the car shield guy. <laughs> hey, um, but the first time you fought Probert, though, like, uh, was, did yeah. you go into that game thinking, okay, maybe this is uh, an opportunity for, for us to go? Like, were you excited <laughs> to fight him, considering you had never fought him before and, and you knew him so well? Uh, well, the first time I fought him was, I was with the Rangers, and it was, it was on a line change, and, Something happened with Esau Tikkanen, and he hooked somebody, and all of a sudden a brawl broke out. And it was Primo. Next thing you know, I got, I got, yeah, your Primo. Next thing you know, I got Proby, and I'm like, holy shit! But the fans, it was so loud in there, and it was just all adrenaline, and and we somehow got pulled apart, and you could see he was mad as hell. Oh. And I'm like, thank God this is over. So <laughs> that was on the second time I fought him. That was a I, I planned on doing that because I I just gotten back in the league. I, it was my second game back with the Red Wings, so I had to I had to make a statement oh, in yeah. Chicago, and and that turned out well. Yeah, no, that was good. You you got you just gotta suck it up. I'm sure you didn't sleep great that night, but I do want to ask you who caught you. Like, of all the fights, man, like you just get caught sometimes, and you didn't get caught that much by any means, and you fucking hurt guys more than, you know, the the, the balance is is way off. But who caught you the worst? And and sometimes it doesn't even show up on YouTube. Maybe it looks worse on sometimes. Maybe sometimes you don't go down. You know how that goes. But who really got you good? Uh, the hardest I've ever been hit was a guy named Don Jackson in Edmonton. Oh, really? We were going toe to toe, and and all of a sudden I threw a punch. We threw a punch at the same time, and we went straight down. I landed on top of him, and I was like, I was seeing stars, but I didn't realize I broke his jaw. So he was in a little worst shape but uh the one that that bothered me forever and it didn't hurt it just buckled my legs was herb raglan oh, oh, with blue. A, number 25 right oh, oh yeah a little fucker yep caught me right in the chin and my legs buckled wasn't hurt stood right up but i'm like son of a bitch i hate losing to you yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know i know was he playing for the blues at the time yeah yeah, no, I'm looking that up. Right I remember. Now, Joey. I remember when he uh, when he played here. Hey, what happened with you and Samanko though? Like, because I couldn't. Oh yeah, the, I, I watch. I watched the video, and it didn't really show what happened. It just showed that you were down, and he was kind of standing. What he do? What he do to you? What he do? You know, I don't remember that one. I I think that I I thought he jumped me, 
and I, there was nothing I could do, but I, I, I would never say that. I, I, I really don't remember, but I do know he was on top of me, slamming my head. So that happens. Yeah, and we, yeah, we've all, we've all done that. I've done that to Andy a couple of days ago. <laughs> Here's the deal. I want your top five, your top five right now. And I don't know how, I know you, you know, you, you've done a lot. I don't know if you're like in, in depth with the tough guys and new age tough guys, Boo Guard and Orzy and those guys, but I, I still want your top five scariest tough guys ever go. Scariest tough guys ever. Well, yep. probably be number, probably right there. Okay. I think Ty Domi is right there. Okay. He's just, he was, he was a great fighter. Mm -hmm. Um, tough guys, uh, does Twister make that list? Twister's on that there list. You he go. threw bombs. Absolutely. Uh, any new age guys? Any modern any guys? Modern, does Derek Bugard make that list? You ever watch his highlights? You no, know, I didn't see a whole lot because when I left the league in 04, I didn't watch a lot of fighting. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, uh, and I, I could be wrong, but I think that George LaRock was pretty scary. Yeah, George he was, was scary. heavy for a long time. Yep, hard to deal with. Yep. You're not, put, you're not putting Herb, Herb, Herb Raglan on Herb Raglan's number six. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> he buckled you. you know, hey. No. I'll never forget, like, this is early in my c uh, career covering, like, the Blues and covering the league and stuff, and, and you throw a chair on the ice, Joey. <laughs> You're a coach. We're that. looking for, I think it might have been an afternoon game, Blues, Detroit. <laughs> You're on the bench. And you wanted to kill Quimble, didn't you? Like, what was happening there? I never I never saw you get that mad on I the ice it. there, Joey. I love it. I it, it was a Saturday or whatever, Sunday afternoon, NBC game, and, and they were just – abusing our team they were abusing holmstrom brown all of our our weak guys but we didn't have a tough team that's that also pissed me off but uh no i just got so frustrated there's nothing i could do so i fired a chair as far as i could across the ice. got a couple games suspension but oh well <laughs> and, then, and then you were okay. just screaming at, at q I He's a big boy. Though. I feel like you and Chaser got in, got into it also, like underneath, down by the dressing room oh. after the game. Is that true? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Chaser must have made that that's story. The, that was a campfire that's story the local, by Chaser. That's the local version. That's a campfire that's story. That's the local version. We love it. Yeah. I would never. Well, I'd never get into it with Chaser. We were too good of friends. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. But uh, did you ever get suspended as a player? Oh yeah. Many times. I think my. Uh, my biggest suspension, I mean, in today's day and age, it probably would have been a, probably a minimum of a, a year. Lifetime oh, ban. Oh, like, we know. Uh, well, lifetime we ban. We get it, Joey, for sure. <laughs> Eddie, uh, it was Eddie Belfour. He, uh, the play was going up the ice, and he gave me one of those right up between the legs with his goal oh, stick. God. I turned around and tomahawked him over the head with my aluminum stick and bent it. <gasps> and he, But he knew he screwed up, and uh, we had to go to our hearing, and he came to the hearing and he defended me and said, listen, he just barely got me, but I got seven games for that. And uh, it wasn't even on video. So this was seven games because of the referee. It would have been real bad but now. That's pretty cool on Eddie's part. Oh my. Though, and Joey. Eddie's our guy. He came Eddie, on our he podcast. Came on too. We get me, everybody. Sent me a bunch of whiskey too. I know. Make sure he send you some whiskey he, he, and he defends you. <laughs> he defends you too like that. That's fucking old school. Take awesome. that to the cabin. Damn right, man. Jesus. That's a, that's a great yeah, kid right mean, there. Hey, yeah. I, I love how you said that it pissed you off that, uh, Detroit didn't have any toughness. Like I, I, I don't. I never understood that. They had all these great players, Hall of Famers. You guys like won every night, but still, like, you'd get the shit kicked out of you every single night. Like, why was that their philosophy? They did. Uh, why did they overlook the toughness part? Well, I, I don't know if that was in the management side of it, but when we won the cup in '97 or yeah, '97 and '98, those two years, I mean. We had our line, which was very physical. We had Darren McCarty was physical. We had Marty Lapointe who was physical. Oh, we had yeah. Brennan Shanahan physical. We had Fedosov and Konstantinov. But then, once a bunch of us left, it's like he didn't replace anybody, which was kind of. And I'm on the bench trying to coach this team. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that enjoyable getting beat up now. Oh my God, you're throwing chairs, Joey. Joey, that, do, do, were you calm though? Like, how was that? I can only imagine you. It's probably easier to be more calm on the ice because you're in more control. But as a coach, and you see things going on, I mean, how would you relate to the guys? Were you cool to let the doors open? You come talk to me. Like, how'd you deal with the guys? I was good. I was good with the guys. I was a very. I was the. Uh, I was the middleman. The guys would come yeah. to me because if they wanted to talk to Scotty or Dave or Dave Lewis when he was coach, 
they'd always run it by me first. And and Dave Lewis would always tell me, he says, listen, they're going to come to you. He says, but you got to pick pick and choose which which stories are worth even talking about. Yeah. He says, don't come to me with every story from these guys because they're just going to they're going to need a place to kind of to whine about stuff and uh, just come with the important stuff. So I was I was kind of the the middleman because I played with all these guys as well. Andy Strickland and Cam Jansen yeah. here for you for GadgetBuyback.com. Yeah. Gadget Lab, they got a store here locally if you're in St. Louis, 5541 Telegraph Road. Here's the deal. you got an old phone, maybe a cracked tablet. Maybe it's perfect, but it's a little bit older. Mm. Turn it in right now, www.GadgetBuyback.com. Upgrade your devices, phones, computers, watches. Anything. Doesn't have to be Apple either. No. Get those tablets turned in. Again, www.gadgetbuyback.com, 877-772-8880. Now back to the interview. Yeah. Let me ask you this, because like, people are curious in this. You know, it's like, you know, you talk about intimidation, how you become an intimidator. But like guys like you, man, it's like it's hard for people to understand how you never fought. You didn't fight off the ice. Yeah. You're like a nice guy. Like you're super friendly, approachable. But when you get on that ice, Joey, like throw that bomb, the baby. switch flips. Like, can you explain Joey Coaster, the person on the ice versus Joey Coaster, the person off the ice? Are they two different people almost? They are. I mean, it, it was our job. I mean, we. Fight or well, successful fighting. I was going to run on the farm in Saskatchewan, pick stones, so. I knew what I had to do, so I did it as a job, and I, I'll i admit I enjoyed it as well, but off the ice, there was no no reason to do that, and I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to take a rush at home with a wife and the family, the kids, you want to, you, you got to be a different person there, and I think, I really believe most tough guys, that's the way they are, I mean, I, I know a lot of it, very very tough players that uh, off the ice. You look at a guy like Stu Grimson, one of the smartest guys you'll ever meet off the ice, but mm-hmm. uh, on the ice, a little different guy. And for for most for most enforcers, that's that was the way it was. I mean, I don't I don't think many of those guys off the ice were assholes at all. No, I know I was a mathematician before I started fighting. You're right. Uh, <laughs> What'd you do with the cups, man? Like, what'd you do when you first won? I mean, like, were you like, I'm taking that thing home. I'm bringing all the boys. You're related to everybody and, and the, all the tough guys. And you in guys the all have the same birthday. You guys all, all have the same birthday. It's so bizarre. <laughs> it reminds me of a movie back in the day. I don't know, Village of the Damned or something. Here's do they a, have a sign that like, says, which, welcome to the town of who? Well, who has every, their name on who's, the sign? Who's the number the one name on that sign? <laughs> well, there's, they got a, a picture with a sign. I mean... A big sign with six of us that played uh, in the NHL. God. Uh, once when you come into Kelvington, I mean the first the first one uh, was back in I think the 40s or 50s who played uh, played in the NHL. But there's six guys that uh, that got, would got a chance to play in the show, except for maybe I think Wendell's brother was on there, uh, Kerry. But Kerry won a Calder Cup. I don't think he ever got in the NHL. Yeah, but still, he won a Calder Cup. Who else like, is on that? Who else is there? Who else is there? I mean, you've got Barry, right? You, Wendell. Is Chaser from Calgary? Barry Wendell. Uh, Chaser's from uh, Porcupine, Porcupine Plains, Plains yeah. down the road. Down the road. That's so funny, man. It's couple, crazy. A couple stoplights away. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? God damn. <laughs> what'd you do? So you just take it, the cup back home, you, you take everybody there. Like, what'd you do with them? Well, the, I'm trying to remember now. Oh, boy. I know the first year I had a party in back in Michigan where I – where I came back to my house, but uh, the one year we took it home to Kelvington and we had a big parade and a big, uh, a big party at the rink and the town went from 900 people to about 3000 that day. And, Hell yeah. and Barry and Wendell and Chaser and all the boys came back and we all sat up on stage and told stories and, and enjoyed the cup. So uh, always included a party. That's for sure. Yeah. It's the best of the best. Right no there. doubt, man. Love it, man. Well, hell yeah, man! Thank, I, we appreciate you coming on. I know you're you're probably see you probably saw a bunch of deer. You could have killed you could have killed so many deer that your family's going to eat wearing, for three years. Are you wearing are you in all camouflage right now? Yeah, what are you doing right now? What kind of gun you got? <laughs> I don't. I'm in I'm in my car hearts. I told you I was splitting wood, but uh, oh, that's right. We, I don't I don't hunt, but I let my guy my buddies hunt. And last night he uh, he shot one through the window of my cabin, so uh, we got our first 
back straps going on tonight. Oh, my oh, God. Like, I love it. Hey, do you have a plate in your hand? I saw an interview with Craig Cox, and he thought you had a plate in your hand. Is that true? No. No, it's just it's just hardened by scar tissue. Because ah. so he, he punched his hand on, the, the, on, on like, concrete. I wish I could say that. See, these are okay. all the folk. Look, let these <laughs> things play out. Just say yes to everything, Joey. Let yeah. the folk tales play out. That's what we do around yeah, here. Exactly. Man, hey, you're the man. We look up to you. Appreciate you coming on. Yep. Go enjoy yourself, and uh, we'll tell all the go boys s- out here you said, hey. Go split some wood. Yeah. <laughs> Will do. And, hey, thanks for having me on. And, uh, yeah, say, all, say hi to all the boys in St. Louis for me. And also my boys at Anheuser-Busch. Uh, oh, you we got will. It. Oh, they'll all be it. listening, man. They always do. <laughs> See you, big boy. We'll talk soon. See you, man. Take care. Good luck. That was Joey Koser. Can you spell Koser? K-O-C-U-R. He's a shit kicker, right? Eh? Yeah. Why, why? The first question you asked me is, can you spell something? Because like, don't do be, that. Why? You don't know how to spell. No, I don't. I, <laughs> I think don't. you got it right, didn't you? No, I'm bad at spelling, man. I'm fucking horrible at it. But then... I don't know what to do. But then you know everything about, like, random yeah, shit. Yeah, like, like, maybe, like, trivia. fucking... Like, uh, like tornadoes. Louis the 14th Like, tornadoes. Shit. No, you yeah. don't know about that. Tornadoes... Yeah, I do, because he brought hot women to fucking Montreal... Back in the 1600s, that's and that's why they're hot. That's how so it fuck started. yourself. <laughs> King Louis the Fourteenth did that. And tornadoes. Tornadoes, yeah. Want to talk about it? Fuck. You see a black cloud, if it turns green, you're like, ah, something's going on. Is the wind very calm? You're like, oh, whoa. This is a tornado because the wind's calm. No, no. That's a calm Hold before on. storm. That's a danger sign if fuck. there's no wind. Nothing going on, and all of a sudden this cloud comes in, and you're like, oh, and then all of a sudden it starts coming in. What do you say? It's black rain wrapped or something? Rain wraps in a story. That means you see a big cloud, a big fucking anvil, a big uh, 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 funnel cloud coming in, but it's all rain wrapped. I mean, it's just a big blob, so you don't see the inner section of the tornado. So when it comes- You ever seen a tornado? Goddamn right. Yeah, you've and lived you, through listen it? Listen to me. No, listen to me. All you people in fucking St. Louis- I know we have Canadian fucking fans, and we love y'all. And sometimes in Manitoba, you'll have a badass one. Look it up on YouTube. I've seen it. But Missouri, all these people are like, I've never seen a tornado. Yeah, you have. You've seen fucking funnel clouds. The only reason why you haven't seen a touchdown for a second come back up and dissipate is because there's hills and there's trees everywhere. I remember coming down Highway 44 one time, and there were six funnel clouds all about to touch at once. And at that night, it killed a bunch of people in Sunset Hills. And I just got back to my home and I fucking did my shit. But I saw four or five funnel clouds all at once. But they didn't touch down because I was at a high point on the entire hill. And I could see, I could see, God damn it! why am I rambling about this? I don't know, but I've never seen a tornado. Because I, I you're the fancy here. lad part of oh, the they don't come there? And you're like, eh, oh, they don't come I'm there? I'm watching fucking... Uh, you know, Melrose Place <laughs> and my fancy ass bullshit. And I'm like, I don't care about tornadoes. I don't know what's going on. You're lucky you're not fucking Can you rocked picture yet. where Joey Coaster was when he did the interview? In the middle of the wood. This yeah, I, get, I actually wood. can't. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna describe it to you. Take a flat area and go for eighty million miles and then put a couple trees and mixed in and, <laughs> and then put it like a fucking cabin. And wear some car hearts. <laughs> and wear car hearts with fucked up knuckles. That's where he's at. <laughs> oh, he says his hand's good now. No, it's not. <laughs> I, oh, you know that. Dude, his hand's so fucked up, man. There's no way his hand's good. Mm. When the rain hits and he's probably like, oh, God, I can't open this goddamn thing. But, like, you kind of downplay it. But when guys who played against him say that he could punch Why right through your that? face. No, I didn't downplay that. Here's what I say, Andy. And I'll, re- re- I'll, I'll rephrase. Like, all the these word. bigger guys that have come around, Here's can they saying. punch through your face, too? Yes, they fucking can. Now, yeah. now, Joey punched hard as fuck. Probably top five ever punch hard. Now, Twister's up there, too. Bugard, a couple of the big buys. Here's the deal. As a tough guy, I look at Joey Kosher, and I'm like, you're 5'11". Mm-hmm. If I fought you toe-to-toe, if I was in that era, I'd grab that right hand. And I'd tie go, it up? Listen to me. Yeah, I'd tie that motherfucker up, and you're, not, you're 5'11". I'm strong as you. So I can grab you and be like, I got you. What are you going to do? And I could do my thing with him. Maybe not. Maybe I would. Maybe not. But if I got to go Dave Brown or Chris Simon, and they're 6'4", and they throw down the pipe lefty on me, that's hard for me to even get a grip on him. Joey Kosher, I'm going to come and grip my grip, and he's not going to hit me off the bat because I'm tall enough to string his ass out. But if I get Chris Simon or Davey fucking Brown, and they come down the pipe 6'4", I'm eating 4 or 5 around the button, homeboy. Mm. You get my drift? Yeah. But for you're, fuck's sake! You're, so don't fucking tell me I'm well, downplaying shit. I just bit. fucking laid it out for you. No, that was. I laid good. it out for that, you. That was okay. 
That was okay. Okay. Geez. Who's the toughest guy you ever fought? Besides, um, God damn. What's his name? <sighs> There's some bad boys, man. Steve McIntyre. Besides McGrath. I mean, like, Trevor Gillies is tough, dude. Like, he's tough. Like, these new school tough guys. I know all the old school tough guys are tough. I get that. Trevor Gillies, Morasti, Bugard, Steve fucking McIntyre, who could knock you out with both hands. Well, you didn't fight Bugard, eh? No, I didn't. You fight McIntyre? Yes, I did. In, in minors. It was a shitty fight. Thank God. Why? But because we both fell. Mm hmm because we both fell, <laughs> fuck boy. But McIntyre could throw lefts on me. He could throw rights on me. He could fucking string me out. He's six foot five. He's a big cowboy. He's a big fucking scary, big headed cowboy that has a long reach that can knock you out with both hands. I'm. It's hard to defend. Joey Kosher, I'm gonna grab you and I'm gonna hold your right hand up. But if I want to go toe to toe with Joey Kosher, he's gonna punch through my fucking skull. So, anyway. Okay. Fuck. Um, just fucking saying. The NHL Network. Yeah. Just uh, they had a list of the top twenty yes. defensemen Get in it the out. league. So I had to look for it. Jesus. Top twenty defensemen in the league. Yeah. Give me your top five. Oh fuck. Oh uh, well. Uh, 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 oh boy from Tampa Bay. Headman. Headman. I'm gonna throw um. Petro in there, fine. I'm gonna throw uh. Fuck. Um. 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 Fuck. Oh, Yossi. Um. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm Seth Jones, man. Seth Jones. Oh, goddamn right. Warinsky might even be up there. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know about top five. Here's their top ten. Go. Cause you got some of them. I mean, it's not like you. You threw me. Dude, you threw dude, a bomb. You, on the spot. you threw a bomb at I'll, me. I'll it's not fighting shit. No, You're you talking did, about top dude, defense. I'm like, ah. Did a good job on that, though. Thank you. Hedman, Yossi. John Carlson's a little high for me. I think he's damn good. He's good offensively. Good. Yeah, he really is. But third best in the league? I don't know. <laughs> Seems a little high. Is he better than Petro? He might be. How old is he? Same age? Uh, I want to say he's like a 90, yeah. Yeah. Remember Carlson scored the game winner in the World Juniors? I don't think, care about the World Juniors, though. No, but if Petro was on the ice on the other side. <laughs> fine, but okay. I, I, that's in your kid, man. No, I'm saying, fuck. you asked me how old they are. He is. So okay, fine. I'm I just think saying, like, age. I, 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 I thought you were saying, I'm not talking, yeah, I'm he's saying, better because no, he did that. No, like, I'm, I'm talking about the age. So. Okay, fine. So I think they're both 1990s. Uh, Seth Jones, so then Petro, Seth Jones, that's their top five. Then Kale McCarr, Dougie oh, Hamilton yeah. is seven. Wow. Wow. And Chris Tang is eight. I think that's a reputation wow. play I, right I, there. I, I, I know. McAvoy, nine. That's Quinn seems, Hughes on in that mug? Not on this one. No, he's on 11, probably 12. And then Miro Haskinen. Yeah, Haskinen is up there. Lindell. I might have be. to put you know Haskinen over Latang right now. I mean, fucking Dallas did their thing with Haskinen doing his shit, dime. and Hamilton. D Dougie Bo, I, I, did he, was he hurt? Do we see I him lately? Know. Then you get to Hughes, Wierenski, yeah, the young Brent kid. Burns. Burns, he, I, I don't know yet. He didn't come oh, on the podcast. He didn't come on the podcast. No, so. he didn't. He barbecues yeah. a lot. I had to talk to him on the phone. I'm like, hey, man, like, you don't want to come on? He's like, I'm not about that stuff. I'm like, all I'm going to do is, like, fucking suck you off. <laughs> like, don't you want that? I'm not hot. <laughs> Theodore. Theodore. I like Theodore. saying Theodore. Shea Vegas. Theodore, but yeah. he's pretty damn good. Drew Doughty. I don't know. Yeah. Weber Slavin. Eric Carlson. You still put him in the top 20? With one leg? Damn. I haven't seen him without one leg yet. Ryan Ellis, top 20. Morgan Riley, top 20. I don't know. Morgan Riley's pretty fucking good, man. Yeah, I know he, fucking is. Team. he is. Yeah. He is. I'd say he's pretty good. You like, because you like talking about Toronto every once in a while. Yeah, we love our Canadians, baby. <laughs> I want you to win a cup so fucking bad. We're going to be talking to some Montreal you, Canadians, Canadians coming up, too. I owe and, you guys. And Montreal, man, they've really improved their roster also. Yeah, they did. So we'll get into that. We like Reed Simpson fucking being a part of that. Oh, yeah. Robbie yeah. Ramage being a part being a part of that. I oh, like yeah. that, man. Mel and B, we, man. Mel, fucking Mel. Did we you not know that? That Mel works no, for the No, I just didn't think about it. Oh, I okay. You named knew. off everybody else. You knew. No, you knew. I, I, of course I know. Joel Edmondson, Jake yeah, Allen, Jake dude. Boy. Kerry Price. Yeah. It's like all our he boys over there. He on Instagram All our time. boys over there. All right, this has uh, been brought to you by CarShield and CarShield.com. Hey, mention the promo code CAM. You're going to save 10%. That's what you do. Give that call uh, phone number, uh, 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM. You're going to save 10%. Uh, listen, if you're in the... Um, process of like looking at your car and say man i don't know man something could go down 
you better get that protection. Don't wait until it's too late. Your starter, especially when it gets cold, too. Oh, oh yeah. Dad, Customize guys. a plan with rates as low as $99 a month. <laughs> it's pretty good, man. And you save 10% on top of that. Get on with yourself. Mention the promo code CAM. It's kind of embarrassing. you got to say CAM. I know. We say I Andy. know it is. We're I know it is. Andy it's embarrassing. Who? Andy who? Warhol? Mention it. Um, and then go get yourself some Bud Light Andy seltzer. Andy Van Slyke. How many seltzers did you have over the weekend? Oh, God. <laughs> Were you mixing that mango and pineapple? Dude, I saw people on Facebook and shit putting a uh, mango. Oh, yeah. And then they uh, make like a cool, like, uh, little drinking game and shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, just be creative. Dude, be creative. Just be creative. And do it with a fight ugly hoodie on, Fucking, too. And send a picture. And we want the pictures. I keep the DMs open by Let's go. And girls. <laughs> uh, well, don't be flirty with me because my wife looks at it. So just like if you're a hockey friend, just text AKM. Hey, I like the show. What's up? Dude, mm-hmm. I'm a female, and that's fine. That's fine, Andy. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But no like flirtiness. Seltzer. Uh, black cherry, strawberry, lemon lime, and help me out. Mango. Mango. Listen, it's mango, baby. It's mango. I want to see the pictures. Hook it up. I don't give a fuck if you're in a goddamn driveway or, or your fucking- in a cabin in the oh, middle of the woods with your car hearts on. With your car hearts with a fucking freezing your ass off, not killing anything because you're so fucking cold you can't even shoot a gun. You're splitting wood, not chopping wood. No, you're splitting, no, with splitting his, wood. With like, like karate style splitting wood. Probably with his bare hands. With his uh, Just fucking... Just with his right hand. He looks like Terminator. I, I look at his coaster's hand like he's fucking yeah. Terminator. Oh, yeah. Like all like metal, like... <laughs> no, just, yeah, just uses his right hand. Like, just yeah, splits it apart. Crush your skull. Andy. Budlight.com, have it delivered to your house. Bud Light Seltzer, unquestionably good. Of course, Victor Hockey and Victor Hockey USA. At Victor Hockey USA. That's their Instagram. That's their Twitter. VictorHockey.com. Check out their website. Check out their hats. Check out their hoodies. Merchandise alert. Merchandise alert. We've got some hats coming out very soon. Oh, yeah. So save up a little bit of money. Um, actually, some great deals coming out on the hats we're going to have gonna out there, man. Up, man. We're going to hook people up. We don't fuck around with that no, shit. No, no. So we've got that coming out very, very soon, collaborating with our boys over there with Victor Hockey, yeah, too. So sure. VictorHockey.com, at Victor Hockey USA. That's their Instagram. That's their Twitter. Hook yourself up with some hats, some T-shirts, some hoodies, and uh, mention the promo code CAM and Strick. You're going to save 20%. Like that, 20%. Hook it up. 20%. Nice hoodies, getting into wintertime. That's right. Don't you want to walk into somewhere and be like, what does that mean? What does that? What does your shirt mean? Isn't that cool when you're like cool? Like, like who is that? Where's like that company peacock? from? Like walking like a peacock. Where's like, that what's sick up, baby? logo with a pine, all the cougar, pine tree that turns into a hockey All stick. the cougars that are just out drinking and they're kind of depressed and they're probably like, I hate my Dude, husband. Dude, somebody sent me a text. I hate my husband. Who's this guy with this? Who's this athlete walking in with this Victor hockey somebody on? Somebody sent me a text. Somebody I know. They said, hey, who? There's more than one person now in St. Louis walking around with the Victor Hockey hat. He went and bought one, dude, Good from their website, him. dude. See, went support, the, Cougars the, look support at the sponsors, baby. And keep it handsome at the same time. Keepithandsome.com. Be respectful. Get the Damn shampoo. Right. Get the conditioner. Smell good. Get the body spray. Psst. Spray that all over you. And just smell good. Just walk. Cam, you smell so handsome. Just walk in. Make love to With me. a little bit of swag. And... Put that fight ugly hoodie on. Could you imagine if you mix it up? If you have the body spray, you got a little uh, beard moisturizer. In and your sometimes face, you gotta mix it up and too. And you have the hoodie on that says "fight ugly" so at the same like, time. Sometimes, like the relationship gets a little dull, and you're like, oh, "What are we doing?" And the kids are fucking pain in the ass. Kids are going to grandma and grandpa's. Get on with yourself, kids. What do you do then? Let's go to Ritz Carlton. I'm putting a fight ugly shirt on. I'm spraying my shit down. I'm smelling handsome. Let's get weird. We need to get out of our fucking home because all y'all know when you're with your wife and you're at your home where your kids are every day and you're sleeping, you're like, give me the fuck out of here so I can get a boner kind of thing. Then you go to a hotel and automatically you get like, whoa, I'm horny. And then you put the fight ugly. Like it's, it's guaranteed. Go have a night. Go have a night. And before you get down with it, take a picture. Mm-hmm. Like it's happening. That's what I want to see. Don't get too gruesome with it. But you get my drift on that? You have to leave the house. Andy, am I wrong on that? Oh, yeah. No, I'm, Andy, sta- I'm in the bubble right Andy, now, dude. Am I wrong on I'm that? I'm in the bubble right now. We're you like lose going on three weeks mind. in the bubble. You have to get I'm away. Like, no wonder the Capitals wanted like, the fuck out of the bubble. It's like, oh, I'm horny. No, my kids are like sleeping. No, no get me out of here. Put the fight. But at least my sure. wife is with me. Is she? Yeah, my kids. Where's she at? Upstairs now, dude. We're <laughs> hanging out at the hotel right now. We're down <laughs> in the boardroom. Talk to the manager. I'm like, can we use your boardroom? Oh, I didn't want to leave the hotel, dude. I'm like, we'll just stay here. 
They're cool as shit. They are. I mean, they got this big fat room. We'd have to go to the office. You can go get a Bloody Mary after the bonefish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got the free drinks coming up at 5 o'clock. You would by scavenge, the way. you scavenger minutes, fuck. 15 minutes, you can get your free <laughs> cocktails. Sca- he, look at Jay. My engineer is shaking his head. He's only a fucking scavenger. <laughs> With them uh, free drinks. Dude, they happen, give you free like, drinks oh every, every night, dude. 5 o'clock, the bartenders hook me up. Good for you. They you know. probably only tip them out. They I know. hope you do. They know. Uh, so check that they out. <laughs> Keep it handsome.com. And the Fight Ugly hoodie goes yep. and supports what, dude? Oh, anti-bullying. I can't believe you weren't bullied as a kid. I, know. I was. you believe that? I kind of was, man. I told you, you got pissed I on. I know you that. did, yeah. Raven. I'm like, Dad, I got pissed on. He's like, what the fuck? I'm like, eh, what do I do? He's like, go, go fucking step up for yourself. My mom's like, Danny. And my dad's like, just fucking do it. Like, Danny. just fucking do it. Danny. I'm like, Mom, I got to do what I got to do. You fucking pissed all over me. I'm like, okay, fine. Toe to toe. Boom, 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 boom. And then they sat us in the principal's office. And the principal was in there because they had to do a speech. And we're sitting right next to each other. And he comes and he's like, you guys aren't supposed to sit next to each other. We're like, we're fine, dude. Like, we're fine. He pissed on me. We beat the fuck out of each other. Now I kind of like him. I don't want to piss on me again. But we've been sitting here talking for 45 minutes, you fuck boy. You've been giving a speech, and now you're fucking losing your mind? No. Like, I did this. Mm. We both did this together. And we became buddies. He came out to the house. Okay, so the money anyway, goes God, back to the Montreal that. Resource Yeah, there Center. you go. There That's you go. what I was getting at. Sorry. I'm asking you, where, Sorry. Where is it? who does it support? Sorry. You talk about Raven Whitlock. He pissed on me. Yeah, I can't believe that. And you forgive him. Dude, we hung out. Yeah, you fight the ugly, man. Fucking big bad motherfucker. Get one of these hoodies. When you stop pissing. And do it now. And I want to see the pictures on our uh, Instagram. Yeah. And on our Twitter. So hook it up. Mention the promo code Cam and Strick. You're going to save 15%. Yo, all our Canadian listeners, and we love Canada. We love y'all. From from Newfoundland all the way to like Saskatchewan. East to West, baby. You're all there. (laughs) We love you. I owe all you so much. Go to Amazon and you can get yourself a a Keep It Handsome hoodie, too. If you're having difficulty with the promo code with the .com and and not the .ca. And by the way, I've been a a therapist, too. Like, I've been reaching back Uh, to people. I have, man. So if you guys got, like, your your kids get bullied. No, people are, like, uh, reaching out. And and a couple of guys, like, they gave me the kid's number and I called in and I left a message and they didn't call me back and that's fine. Like, that's like what always happens to you. It's like not you, with the it's women. like you trying to book a guest. Not with the women. The same time. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fuck, man. They don't <laughs> even book it back. Even closer. Fuck. I thought for sure that would have been your lucky fucking one. Embarrassing. I'm a fucking joke. Although he's in the woods all the time, no cell no, service. No, fuck that. He ignored me, man. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, man. Bellman and Bellman.com. Get your new car. Get your pre-owned car. Whatever you want. Bellman.com, Cadillac, Buick, GMC, and one side of the street on the other side, it's what? Buick and uh, uh, No, Dodge. that's on the other side. Why you put me on the fucking... Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. G- G- I knew that, dick. <laughs> Why are you such a dick, man? Now they're going to be like, well, fucking Cam doesn't fucking oh, know. Oh, no, he knows. Don't be fucking Dude, stupid. Dude, you're looking for that pearl white Idiot Buick boy. Enclave with captain I'll seats. I'll take that motherfucker. I'll drive right... Look, Dan, I'll, give me that fucking Buick. I'll drive that motherfucker around like, what's up? Like a fucking peacock. Like, I'm going out to park fucking VIP. I'll fucking do my shit with a fucking Buick. Mm-hmm. I might have to tent them fucking windows out, though. So if you want to hook me up that. with a fucking... You, you can know, do that. Yeah, oh, I need that. The GMC I don't want people looking at me when I'm doing... Listen, between GMC, the Cadillac, yeah. the Buick, the Dodds, Chrysler... Jeep rent. You, they got you taken care of, dude, for the fall. I'll take the winter. Buick. Okay? Like you guys are chirping me so about. It. Like just I'll do it. Make your choice. Best customer service you're gonna find anywhere. Uh, I, I, I I just want to make you do it a little bit. Just honestly, you gotta hey, let them know, dude. So honestly, our fucking our um, our <laughs> our social media cat, who we love, Brody. We love him. But this dickwad comes on social media about like the charger, Dodge Charger. Remember the guy on social media is like, this is a fucking charger. I fucking bang pussy. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh my God. That's what I'm, that's the swinging dick I'm talking about. That's the fucking guy I'm talking about when your wife goes up to a, a car dealership and 10 fucking guys walk out and they're whipping their dick around like, I'm a fucking millionaire. No, you're not. I beat your husband. No, you didn't. I will put no you don't you don't do shit be nice to me treat me like Cleopatra walk me in here give me a fucking water what the fuck are you doing my wife has to text like these guys are creeping me out Cam help me I gotta go there and fucking smack motherfuckers around not at fucking Bellman look up that fucking post on you. <laughs> <laughs> look at that post stop telling you don't have oh that my it's God. so horrible we should have owned that post 
a fuck he fucked up, man. That's who I'm that talking was, about. Well, this There's is exactly always who some it is. truth to everything I he say. He was like, I was first team all conference. No, you weren't. <laughs> no, you weren't. I was all state no, wrestling. No, you weren't, no, man. No, you wasn't. just weren't, dude. No, fuck you. All right, Cope24, right. Cope24.com. We've got a big event coming up. We'll be telling you about that. We've been telling you about that for months. Fuck. It's coming, I promise, like a week away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're going to be able to get some great auction items and support a great cause, too. Cope24, Cope24. Dot com. Did I forget anybody? Joey Kosher. Joey Kosher's dead. <laughs> what did you say? Joey Kosher. What about him? You forgot. How that, that's what we're talking I know. about. That's yeah, who yeah. we had on, dude. He God, was great. Damn. I love Joey Kosher, man. He's a legend. And he brings it. And uh, even tried to chirp <laughs> Joel Quimbo on the bench, dude. I know. He would have bagged his ass up. Uh, that would have been a tough fight. Really? Quimbo's big. Q. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he but he thought not... he was six foot five. He is. No, he's not. Well, he's six or four? I know. Sorry. I think he's like Sorry. six one or six two or something. Joel Quinville? Yeah. Oh God. No, we're keeping this live. Look it up. Joel Quinville, hockey coach. <laughs> Time out, guys. Look how, at this. How old is he? How, how, how Joel Quinville. How big is he? Six foot one. Yeah. Fuck! Yeah, <gasps> no way. Yeah, you think everyone's like six five, six six. They're not. Thank you. They're not. Alexa. But Joey Coaster was great. Excuse the phone issues, man. That's what happens when we go to our guests when they're splitting woods in the middle yeah. of the freaking woods. With their bare woods. hands. We're not waiting for them to come back to civilization. We're like, no, bro, no. we'll do it while you're splitting wood. And that's what we did. Sponsored by Carhartt. Should be, actually. No shit. <laughs> I know. All the deer should pay for us if no so shit. Joey doesn't kill it all. All right, this was Joey Kosher. Episode number 88, if you can believe that. Damn, dude. On the Cam and Strick podcast.